citizens' right to address their government in, the, in this meeting. However, I, enforce this, um, I intend to enforce this three-minute uh, rule that uh, we have in place so this meeting can run effectively and efficiently. Once you reach your three minutes and complete your sentence, the floor will be taken back by me. Uh, please avoid campaigning or personal attacks against personnel or officials which should be handled in another forum other than business meeting of this body. First person we have on the list this morning is Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. Pierce, please come forward, state your address and, uh, and your subject matter, please. <coughs> Today's a good day. You know what's a good day? Because I'm going to get called from California, I hope. <laughs> I'll know by 8 o'clock tonight if I make it to Shark Tank. Anyway, first thing I want to clear up, <clears throat> I borrowed the Bible from out front. And I'm going to put my hand on it. It's been a long time since I've been to court. But I know you're supposed to put your left hand and raise your right hand. So there it is. I had nothing to do with Channel 46. Just want y'all to know that. I got a few phone calls that I did, but I didn't. Didn't know it was coming up. But when you say it's difficult to not attack people and say people, I don't know where else we're gonna say it. I go down the courthouse steps, doesn't work down there. People with the red signs got arrested for it, though, just about. <coughs> I'd like to congratulate Mr. Leonard on getting the governor to uh, appoint him. Now, excuse me, Larry Pierce, <laughs> 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Thank you. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, on Channel 46, the man is known as Bulldog. Now, we were quite surprised that 46 took it because the channel that really comes out and goes around it's two and five, that's who goes up there. But anyway, when he came up here, as y'all know, he spoke to Mrs. Jones. And she gave him a few minutes of his time. And then he hung around because he wanted to talk to her some more. <clears throat> and Madam Chair, I sit with about 10 to 15 people every day. And I want you to know that the talk is not good in regards to when you said to him, it's not my concern in regards to the corner spending money. And Mr. Martin was running interference. So I didn't know Mr. Martin became the armadillo protector. But I will say this, when the news media wants to talk to somebody, unless there's something to hide, talk to them. And I do think that you owe an explanation as to what you mean by not concern. That might be that you mean you can't tell her what to do. That's true. But isn't it amazing when I came up here a year ago and nobody wanted to listen? Well, let me tell you, everybody's going to listen because the district attorney, it leaked out from Channel 46, and he verified it, is carrying on an investigation. So we'll just see where that goes. Now, I want to present something real quick. It's a, a humor side of life. This shirt is from Hawaii and it's quite tattered, it's 20 years old. It's made from the rock of the Kilia volcano in Hawaii. <coughs> For you people who've never been to Hawaii, Hawaii is the largest island. This point, you reach your three minutes. You have three minutes and 15 seconds. And How long? How long have I got? I said, no, you're finished. You're at three minutes <laughs> and 21 seconds now. So if you could, 21 seconds? Yes, sir. Well, real quick, I got a phone call from a seismologist. 
He said the only way you can cure the volcano is the pagan religion was you had to have a, a virgin to throw in the volcano. And he called me and says, you know any virgins over there? We don't have any in Hawaii. And I said, how about a slightly used corner? <laughs> and her deputies, he said, as long as y'all can arrange the ticket, I'll go with her. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Pierce. Uh, and we will take this matter under advisement. And you are correct. I do owe the citizens a response. Uh, with the word concern that I guess you're saying, uh, I said I was not concerned. You know what? The reporters did not give the entire interview, and I wish they had to play the entire interview. I said I've been working with budgets for 31 years, and this is the first quarter. And uh, this is the first quarter of the game. And if you have a variance in a budget, if you do the right thing, change your processes and change your course, because this could be just related to processes, it could be one thing that may be off kilter, you have the opportunity to recover. I consider a budget over. I consider December 31, 2018, then we'll, it'll be game day. We'll determine whether that budget is over. But to say I'm not concerned, you're right, it is the coroner's office. I can make recommendations, but uh, right now, because I've, I've worked with turbulent budgets, I'm just, I don't want to, I don't want to react, uh, and I won't react, but what I will do is I'm going to keep my eye on the sparrow, and uh, uh, for, the, for the citizens, I'm watching it. I just want to let you know I'm watching it, but uh, to say concerned, I've been working with budgets a long time. And I've been pushed in the front all the way to the right. Just let's talk about this $8.5 million budget that we had. It was a deficit, and we turned it around. And I believe I can turn a 196,000 uh, budget around, 196,000 versus 8.5 million. That's like a drop in the bucket. So right now, still early. We're in the first quarter. So as we go forward, I've made some huge recommendations. And if it, if it doesn't turn in, of course, it's on the court and the office, OK? Did I answer your question? I hope I did. Well, All right. I, I just I just want to remind that when somebody goes over budget, y'all are the ones allocating yeah. the money. Yeah, I understand. And you've got to stop that Mr. some people do whatever they want to do. Okay, Mr. Pierce, thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have Mr. Ben Davis. Mr. Ben Davis, would you please uh, state your address <clears throat> and your subject matter? And remember, I, I noticed your subject matter is on his. Uh, Commissioner Ann Patty Jones, what I won't do is allow my commissioners to be attacked. So, is it any other type of, so just talk about your subject matter. Let me follow up on what this gentleman here said. Okay, well, if you can do that, state your name, <coughs> your address. My name is Ben Davis. Mm -hmm. I live at 3856 Hunt Road. And I also sit with 10 or 12 or 14 people who live in the county of Douglasville. Now, one of the things that we are concerned with is why is Ms. Geiger, this gentleman here, and the prior coroner so all of a sudden interested in the newly elected female of Douglas County Coroner? Now, we never heard anything about any of this in the past, what, how long was the coroner? 23, 25 years. One of the things, because I voted for her, and everybody else that I represent voted for her, one of the things she asked me <clears throat> when she initially took office was to ride in the uh, van with all those, I guess what the right word is, internments of which Randy had left in, in, in the coroner's office, all them dead people that was in boxes. And I told him no. I told her no. The main reason I wasn't going to do that because I don't know what those spirits are. You know, whether they was good, bad, or beyond. But one thing I did know that they hadn't been put in their proper place and they were left there by the prior corner. You don't keep bodies in your office. The next thing I want to know, I want to know what your educational background is. I have a BA in psychology, a master's in education with an emphasis on correctional counseling. I came here in 1974 and started, uh, excuse me, trained every halfway house director in the state of Georgia on the eclectic approach to helping. My specialty is behavior modification. I wrote a, I <clears throat> wrote a grant and got from LEAA, which is Law Enforcement Assistance Association, $1.5 million in 1969. Now, I understand that you have 28 
30 whatever years in public service. But have you ever worked for anybody? <clears throat> Do you have any expertise in anything? Because I went to one of your forums and you stated about PSTD. And well, if somebody gets off of the, uh, their medicine, you know, they'll do that. That is a short-term solution. That's not a long-term solution. It takes years for you to overcome that kind of thing. And it's not just with medicine. So one of the things that I say to you, and I'm going to come back with some more facts mm -hmm. about this situation. Oh, I also have on my phone a picture of this gentleman here dumpster diving last Wednesday over at the coroner's office. As a matter of fact, not two pictures. I mean, not one picture, two pictures. <laughs> now, in a law enforcement situation, and I know some of you are in here, that would be called stalking. And if it was on my property, I would have the right to shoot him. Mm. Mr. Davis, you're yes, you reaching three minutes. If you okay, but here's down. the pictures, okay. if you all would like to see them. Let, let me see. No, I ain't asked you to see nothing. No, I'm not speaking to you. Oh. I'm speaking to the chair. Oh, I just want to verify that. No, it don't make, oh, it's your picture. Oh, really? oh it's you. Order, please. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Ben, thank you. We'll take this guy under advice, Mr. Davis, and thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am, and I'll show you the pictures or, 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 or send them to you or whatever else. Okay. <clears throat> Last but not least, we have Mr. John Tamaski. Mr. Tamaski, please come forward and give us your address and the subject matter. And I can barely read it. I believe it's the coroner as well. Is that what you have? Okay. Hardly. Uh, <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, John Tamaski, 2929 Post Road. I'm speaking on governance. Governance, okay. I can and read it. Uh, this is motivated by the election season that is in full swing, primaries coming up, and then so on. And uh, I wanted to point out that all Americans should be small d Democrats because the country was founded on the basis of democracy. If you're not for democracy, I don't think you're for America. And also, all Americans must be small r Republicans because the fourth arc of the Constitution, Section 4, the United States Constitution, requires that each of the states be a republic. So the point of it all is one party having one name, one party having the other name, we all must be small d Democrats and small r Republicans. So what's the difference between the parties then? Well, to my observation, people get involved with government as government officials or party officials for either two reasons. A concern for the general welfare or personal reasons, which can either be economic or psychological. And it makes little difference whether one is a big D Democrat or a big R Republican what counts is, is the person there to promote the general welfare or not? So when one considers governance, considers elections, <coughs> look at the person's motivation. As long as there's a commonality of interest in the general welfare, differences between individual politicians are not about ultimate goals. They're just about what's the best means of getting there. So you can always talk. You're trying to reach the same end. But if your motivation is to better yourself, you're not going to depart from that. You're sticking to that agenda. And you can't talk to those people about the general welfare. So this, I think, is a fundamental <coughs> look at governance. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to 
get under the surface and deal with the fundamental issues. Last year, Ted Cruz made this one statement. Uh, I really don't follow him, but it's the only thing I've ever heard him say that's true, that in Washington and beyond, in, in cases, Mr. They're all corrupt. Mr. Maskey, you've exceeded your three minutes. You have three minutes, 21 seconds. Can you Thank wrap you. it up, please? That's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And we'll take this matter under advisement. Okay, next. Today we have four presentations uh, this morning. And our first presentation, I believe we do have the coroner update. And we have uh, Mr. Larry Blessing that will be providing that update. The coroner cannot be here with us today to some personal reasons. Do you have a PowerPoint just want to No, I, I just okay. have a break a breakdown right quick, but I would like to uh, do a PowerPoint if we may at the next work session for those who are Mr. Bussey, I'm please sorry. give us your name. I'm sorry, my name is Larry Bussey. I um, work in the corner zone as the administrative assistant. Okay. Okay, Madam Chair. Good morning everyone and also Madam Chair and other board members. Um, I'm going to give you a list of brief snapshot of what is going on in the coroner's office right now. But what we would like to do on behalf of the coroner is do another presentation in the next research section to give you some overview of what we're doing as for presenting some bar charts and documentation to show what's going on within the coroner's office itself. But since the time to frame that we've been there, that been there, we've established a record management system. In that record management system, we are actually have all cases that come in, any type of death investigation that comes in, we have it broken down by color code. I.e., for an example, if it's a homicide, we have it in a red code. If it's a suicide, it's in a, it's in a yellow code. So everything is actually color coded, but we'll know exactly what type of case it is and what other agency assists with that. We also established a software called cornerme.com where we can go in that, in that report system and print any type of form that is needed for any other agency that needs to pick up a person's remains or personal property, everything of that nature. We also have a evidence law that we maintain when we receive personal effects, wallets, rings, or whatever. We make sure we keep those in the evidence bags, and when those family members or someone come to pick those items up, those items are released on a form that we keep a track and record who's getting what. Um, we also recently got a cooler. And that is where, at one point in time, uh, the GBI wouldn't accept the body because they might have a backlog and couldn't receive any bodies, then the bodies had to be transported to some of the local funeral homes to be stored there until the GBI was able to receive those bodies. Now that, as we all know, and I, I, since I've been there, I heard that was the cost to the county for that, but since we've gotten that cooler now, that will alleviate some of that cost in regards to those funeral homes receiving those bodies where we now have at least six rooms, six spaces, but we can retain a body ourselves in the cooler and then transport it to the GBI if it's necessary. The uh, last item is that the transport vans have been equipped with everything that's needed for the investigator when he goes to a scene, i.e. a toolbox pertaining um, holding his uh, hazmat suits, um, all the files and paperwork that is needed, gloves, boots, and etc. Whatever's needed for that crime scene to go investigate, it's in, it's in their vans. But as I said before, I'd like to come back with the coroner and give a complete overview of everything we've done with the illustrations and also a, a pie chart to show exactly the number of deaths from January to the end of May, if all possible. Yes. We will add you to you said the next meeting, which will be our uh, first meeting in June. All right. Thank you. Be the first meeting in June. We'll any questions yeah. for uh, Mr. Bussey? Don't make any questions for commissioners. Commissioner Thank you, Madam Chair. No, I, I make a comment. I, I, I appreciate and make sure you convey this message to the court. And we appreciate, we look forward to her participation in the next meeting. Um, um, she, 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 she should, we welcome her. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this budget, you know, think about our budget as a commissioner, so what we're responsible for, for governance. <clears throat> um, Director Holman, what all funds in 120, 130 <clears throat> million, give or take. Let's just say our annual budget is 100 million, right? The Board of Commissioners is fully responsible for. The quarter is responsible for 200,000. That's like the rounding error of our SPLOS on a monthly <clears throat> basis, right? Let's keep this in perspective. I appreciate it, 
All dollars need to be accounted for. Absolutely, processes need to be reviewed. No doubt about it. But you gotta keep it in context, guys. Right? Think about it. 100 million, 200,000. And the importance of the function that the coroner provides. You know, we, we, we dismiss it, we marginalize it, and yet, like, do you know what they do? Do you understand what the coroner does? And, and it, I mean, I just, I just sit back and I listen. That's all I can do, I can, I can observe. And I, 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 I just, I, I listen to the spirit of, of, of sort of like, okay, and I'm not gonna go over history because it'll play out by, by itself, right? There's, there's, it, it will do what it does. We as a board of commissioners are to oversee, but elected officials must be accountable for their own actions. No more than me in my expense reports, right? Everyone is accountable for their own actions, right? Uh, my question then becomes, I'm gonna move on beyond that statement, which is, um, we said something about the freezers, or a freezer, um, and it would allow us to have, I'm gonna direct this first to the county administrator, did we approve that in this year's budget? And um, I'll start there. Um, no, sir. That was purchased out of 190. Uh, we purchased out of 190. All right. So was that part? Of, all right. So this was an amendment to the budget that we approved, or no, sir. It, wasn't, it was purchased outside the budget, outside the coroner's budget. Okay. So through 190. Through 190. So this is something that we believe. I mean, is a freezer necessary for? Yes, sir. I believe it is. Okay. So just the process actually started last. March. Right, so here we are a year later um, that it was asked for. Mm -hmm. And it could help, I think I heard him say, help alleviate some costs. And, and we, again, I don't understand any of this, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking very broad questions, not as an, an inquisition. But it's a year later, we didn't budget for it for whatever reason. We told us, we pick it up at 190. I get it, that's our role. We, we, no, no problem. But I'm, <coughs> one more time is, there was no standard prior to the current one. The whole point of getting into this whole process to establish, let's get some reports, let's get some information, let's, let's now carry it forward, right? But now I'm saying under our watch, since we're talking about our watch, and I'm like, okay, but it took a year to get a freezer? And, and yet here we are, we, we did it in 190. Um, okay, so let me ask this question. And I'll, I'll, I, that's all I had, one question. So this freezer that we purchased out of 190, um, how long does it take to become operational? Uh, and again, thank you, but I got it. the coroner's not here, so I don't want to put you on the spot per se. You can carry back the message, but kind of administrator, how long does it take um, for uh, a freezer to be operational? Like, does it have to be tested? Or, I don't know. Oh, it's it's pretty much ready. There are trays that were ordered that will be here. It's my understanding Wednesday. Um, yeah, it's fully <laughs> operational. Okay, so this coming Wednesday, so we will, mm -hmm. and, and how long does a, a freezer last? I mean, what is the purpose of the freezer? And I, I'm just, I'm, just for the public sake, we're talking about a freezer. Okay, somebody give an answer to that. Mr. Bussey. Mr. Bussey. Bussey. What is the purpose of the freezer? The purpose. What cool. purpose does it say? So the cooler. Oh, cooler. Cool. Sorry. I'm sorry. The cooler is, uh, it preserves the body until we can actually get it transported to you. So if your home comes, picks it up, or well, it goes to the GBI. Okay. What is the typical holding period for um, such before and after? I mean, we, we're just trying to find general, you know, what's the general process? So how long does a body uh, person, whatever the proper, how long does, is the holding period? We try to, we, we no longer than 24 hours. Okay, okay. No so it's- 24 hours. Okay, so it's, it's moving, it's- Yes, it's sir. Um, who services that? Uh, is there a service contract that goes along with that or do we, how do we clean? I mean, what, what is the process? Is there costs associated with maintenance of a cooler? We uh, got a cooler from sub refrigeration. That would be something that I'll currently have to answer because I have no idea who would actually service it unless we get that contract from the servicing person. That's what well, that's, that's okay. the transaction goes. You're okay. Um, County Commissioner, can you give us a little insight how that works? No, sir. It's my understanding. I mean, that's the first I've heard of a contract for servicing a cooler. Have we ever had a cooler before? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, never in the history of the county. Okay, all right, I'm going to yield for that. I, again, we'll wait until um, the coroner is here, Madam Chair. I think we can ask more. I can ask more detailed questions, so I yield. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, other questions, Commissioner Geiger? Uh, yes, Mr. Bussey. What, what's your title? I'm sorry. Administrative assistant. Uh, are you part time or full time? Part time. 
You're part time. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a county car that you drive back and forth home? I drive it to the GBI and back to the house when I'm going to GBI. So you don't drive it home every day? No, I mean, I live in Fulton County. Yes, ma'am, I do. You, you drive a, a county car back and forth every day? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know of any other part time employee that uh, has a county issued car. Uh, the two items that the um, coroner has overrun her budget has been other professional services and fuel. Um, it has been my contention, and I wrote to the uh, chairman, I can't remember back when, when, when did I write to the memo to you asking you to look into this? It was last year sometime. Uh, I wrote her a letter uh, last year asking her to look into the discrepancies in the fact that uh, the billings had gone up for the other professional services that the deputies were doing most of the work according to <coughs> documents that I had from the probate judge and other sources. Uh, however, um, uh, no one could ever give me an answer as to what percentage the coroner does of the work, the investigations and the transports. Do you have any idea what percentage she does? No, this time I can't answer that question for you. Uh, is it, can you take a stab at it, 50 percent? I would like to give you a direct answer, but I really can't. I would like to go back and look at our cases, our previous cases about what, what deputies have done the cases and what the coroner has done that I can give you, I can give you more <coughs> answer to that question. Well, uh, what about this year, just this year, from January 1st to now? What percentage has she done of the work? I'll give you a ballpark for the case that she's going on. She's done at least five, ten cases already. She has done the investigations? She's done the investigations. She sir. did the investigations, but her name is not showing up in the probate. What happens there when she does the investigations, she doesn't sign the investigation. If she goes, to. if she goes to the scene, she does the investigation, and the deputies are the one that transport the remains to the DBI or to wherever it goes to the hospital. Who does the death certificate? She signs off on the death certificate unless it's assigned to one of her deputies. If it's assigned to one of her deputies, the one of her deputies act to sign the death certificate. Which, did she have a full-time job in Hayfield? No, ma'am, not to my knowledge. Uh, I think she did. I think she's admitted that she had a job in hateful. I have pictures that I didn't take. I do not stalk people. Yeah, but she's part time as well. She's I'm just saying, <clears throat> I have pictures of our county car in the personnel pen down at hateful, the city of hateful. Mm -hmm that other people have brought to me. People bring this to me simply because they just trust me to do something about it. Uh, every citizen of this county should be concerned if someone is defrauding the county because we all pay taxes. Democrat, Republican, we all pay taxes. And this is what this whole thing was about, was the fact that she was not doing any large percent, if any, of the investigations. I have uh, sheriff's office reports that I've gotten. I always try to do my research before uh, I say anything. And so I just ask that the uh, chairman do an audit to check into this because it did not seem, it, se it seemed like the deputies were doing all the work. The audit confirmed that. The audit confirmed it. I didn't. And so, uh, but then the audit was, filed in the finance uh, committee um, and nothing was said. I kept waiting, kept waiting, kept waiting. So I did not, I will swear on the Bible, I did not go to Channel 46. I think, um, <coughs> Mr. Bulldog, <laughs> I'm sorry to call you that, but uh, I think he could verify. I didn't call him. So <coughs> other citizens are concerned about this other than me. I just want the truth. I want someone to do their job. Uh, I do, know what, do not want them to be taking the county car to a second job in another county and us paying for the gas and paying for the car. When she is not on call, the three, the three deputies are on a rotation. Is that not right? That's correct. On a rotation by week, 
and they handle all those calls. But according to the records that I have obtained, she has been in, on zero, zero investigations and transports. <coughs> and that is my problem with the whole situation. That's why our budget is running over. And I yield back. You back. Okay. Any you other know, questions? Oh, one other thing. Yes. The cooler. Uh, the GBI has just recently expanded, well, in the past year or so, has expanded their cooler. And that's why they ran out of space. But now they have a large cooler that can accommodate anybody. Is that not true? I wouldn't know what about that. Well, you go Normally down there, when we right? call the GBI and request, we'll, we'll call the GBI. We don't know what the situation is for the type of investigation. They'll call us back and say we can bring that particular remains to the GBI lab or we have to take it to the cooler. Nine times out of ten, they'll accept it. you got to remember now, the GBI is serving 159 counties. And out of the 159 counties, they're only four counties they have medical examiner's office. But they have to maintain their own remains and own deceased there. So when we do call, we have to get permission to bring those remains to the location. If they don't have space, then we have to wait but about 20 But they recently renovated the GBI cooler space, have they not? I can't speak on that. I don't know. <clears throat> um, well, my whole contention is somebody utilizing their position for personal gain. I don't care who they are. Uh, and I would, and as I explained in the, the letter to the chairman a year ago, I did not look for it. Someone sent me a report, and it did not jive with what we were billed for. And that's what caught my interest to begin with. And it had nothing to do with the coroner at that time. It was somebody else in the coroner's office. So, I turned it over to the, uh, the commissioner here, the chairman, and I waited for action to be taken, and she <coughs> ordered the audit. And when the audit came back, it verified many concerns I had, and nothing was done. So that's where I am today. And I hope whatever happens with the DA, that you know, the truth will come out. And I go back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have. Give a lot. Just one more. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. You know, but, you know, the comment was made about the finance committee. Um, you know, and that is our role to um, look into things, all things money related. Um, and obviously, the audit came back, and it was a reconciliation. Um, our, remember, we're just governance. We're just oversight. It's like a matrix. Anybody's worked in corporate America. Uh, we're not over elected officials. Our only influence is through policy, specifically money, right? And that gets our attention that we, we have the influence to sound and talk to them, no more than a, a DA, a sheriff, a judge, or whomever, right? That's, a, that's the only time we have a chance to really uh, have any say in their world, is through the monetary um, appropriation process. Um, at the, you know, what I'm hearing, though, is that it's uh, about work. And so this is the debate, this is policy, this is whether we take action or not. So let's have that conversation. It says, well, but they're elected. And if they choose to lift a, a pencil or not lift a pencil, it's not my job to sit there and tell them what they should do. Because they, they cut a, a, a contract and took an oath before the public on their job. Right? And so if they have a, a process in place that says, well, I chose to outsource it. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to do it that way. That's their choice. Our job is just to follow the money. But I, oh, yeah, yeah. I, again, it, it, goes, it, it, goes to, it, it goes to a point of, well, the coroner has to be accountable. And I, 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 I again, be careful about answering questions before she gave an answer. You did a pretty good job, but um, you know the coroner has to be accountable for for this moment, right? And so that's all I'm saying is that but let the coroner defend her moment, which is she doesn't have to do it that way, right? I can outsource this now. Whether or not there is a a, a violation or something that's being implied, well then let let that play out. But at the end of the day. 
you gotta let that person to cut a deal with 140,000 people to have their day in court. To, to sit there and talk to the public and give an accounting for, well, I chose to do it this way because I don't have to take 10, 23 decades and do it that way. I can do it this way. Now, there are other conditions, there's other components to the argument. I got it, no problem. I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. <clears throat> well, I'm focused just on this, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the general premise is that the coroner has to do it this way because this is the way it was done for 30, 40, 50 years? No. She can do it the way she chose to do it, if in fact that's what she chose to do. That's my only point, which is like, and so what you hear is sort of the comment earlier about a difference in ideology, which is like, well, okay, I just don't agree with how you're thinking about it. This ain't about partisanship, it's just I just disagree. I see a person who's elected, at large, that has a right to run her office the way she chooses based on what she interpreted. And so now it plays out. You're right, it plays out. And so now the execution of that and the monitoring of that on a monthly basis, which is the other point, which is, okay, you got a budget, just like any other elected state official, um, county official, department head, we give you your budget and now you have to manage to that. It's a year, you have a year to get it right. You have a monthly report that gives you insight on how well I'm doing this. So if I'm over this month, I could be under that month, and it, it flows. Come on, this is budgeting one-on-one. -on -one. We're not an inexperience here. This person has time to cure this. So right, the audit came out like, look, here's some recommendations. You heard the statement was made, but well, here's some recommendations. You may need to tighten this up. You got a moment here. We're not playing with this. This person knows exactly like that, but you gotta give them room. The rest of this is show. I don't, I, I, I get it, I'm fine. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I want to make sure that, you know, I, I try to give a, a, a sort of a, an integrity to the moment. It says, no, that's not how this plays out, but, or, or to give balance. And so this, the coroner, in, in the context of this, should be allowed to respond to the public or commissioner, but at the same point, be given time to, to, to cure it. Like any other department that I look at every month that goes over that we sit there and we're like, okay, this person's under, this person's over, this person's under, this person's over. We've been doing that a long time, since we took, oh, I mean, a long time. There's always variances, but they should be allowed to correct it and bring it under, you got a budget. Don't blow your budget now. Based on this trajectory, you may not make it by October, but we're just trying to help you. That's our job, to try to work with department heads, work with these elected officials to give them insight. But it's not to be their direct <laughs> command supervisor. And so I just want to make sure we, we, we're, we're all on the same page in what we're listening to, or at least have a balanced <coughs> conversation about this. It's not just one interpretation of what's happening. All right? And so, anyway, I yield back. I'm here. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Gunn. One correction. The law governing the coroner's office says she, he or she shall do the work unless they are unable to do so. Having another full-time job in another county is not making it uh, unable to do so. I yield back. Okay. All right. Um, let's wrap this up as we go forward. I just wanted to just have some time. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to see you, yes. Mitchell. Thank you. Thank My you. head was down. Okay. I I'm not going to get into a long debate, but <coughs> first of all, thank you for at least coming forth and at least trying to share some information. And from understanding, your January through May death updates will be forthcoming. Yes, sir. I heard you correctly. Yes, sir. And that will hopefully be in our next meeting or meeting after that, whatever that is. That's what we're asking for, yes. Okay. So you've already kind of got that on your on your to-do list. That's correct. And her to-do list That's to make correct. sure that we kind of get that update. You spoke about the hazmat. I hope I'm saying right. Hazmat. Hazmat uniform. Okay. How many do you got? Okay. How many you guys got? We have a box we, now. We have the other disposal. You have how many now? We have 24 in the box. We have disposal. Okay, got it. Disposal. Got it. So we finally got that. Too. Yes, we did. Uh, what's that, Mark? Uh, I know we talked about this some years ago, not some years ago, like maybe a year ago. Um, was that also out of 190 uh, that we got those? Because we talked about this, I, I know, early in the year that they didn't have any. Don't know kind of how everything happened as to why and why not, but. I'm not positive. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. I'm just trying to make sure because everybody's talking about budgets and numbers and where yeah. they're coming from. I just want to make sure that I don't remember those. Okay, okay. that's okay. We can, we can get on that, but but you got it. We got it. Okay. Uh, the cooler. Um, okay, so now we've got the cooler. And um, 
that almost took a year to get. Uh, you'll get back with us on who will do the maintenance, yes, kind of how that whole makeup does, and you know. But but at least now you have a cooler that was talked about. At least I know I did over a year ago. Don't understand why the process took so long to get, but we got one now. Yes, right. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my other question is okay. When, when you guys do your pickups and drop-offs, pick back up and bring them where to any, whatever service that you guys have, you know, when you first do the initial pickup and GBI said bring it to, who makes that request? GBI said, okay, bring them here versus you guys take them where? Let me I'll give you an example. If we okay. get a call at Wellstar Douglas Hospital, whatever, if the coroner and the investigator go to the hospital, okay. And determine what the cause of death is. Now, if it's natural, then that person would not have to go unless they're at a certain age, 55 and under, has to go to the GBI. That's, the, that's automatic. That's automatic. If they're older than that age, then the GBI can say, no, we'll accept them. You don't have to take them, send them to it. We'll then we ask the family, okay. we have a list of funeral homes. We ask the family, which funeral home would you like for your deceased to be sent to? Mm -hmm. Okay. It will give us that list, it will sign that list, and we'll call that funeral home and let them know that that person is ready to be picked up from the hospital. If they can't pick that person up from the hospital, then the coroner, the deputy coroner, would transport that person up to the funeral home. But most of the time, the funeral home comes to pick that person up from the hospital. Yeah. If we go on a homicide or a suicide, mm -hmm. once the investigation is completed by the PD or the sheriff department, okay. then we will take that body, we'll call the GBI and let them know we have a suicide or homicide. Mm -hmm give them the race, age, and the service time behind it. At that time, they'll say, okay, let us call you back. What they're doing in that process is trying to have to do they have enough room to receive that body to complete the computer autopsy. Okay. Once we get that call, then we'll transport that body to the GBI lab for the <coughs> autopsy. Got it. So using that same hypothetical, if, let's say using that, 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 that particular hypothetical, if by chance uh, GBI don't have the room, now the body will be picked up and brought to our freezer. That is correct. Okay. And then, but it's still being wait. There's a time frame where you're going to still take it to GBI because they just didn't have the room, but they're still waiting for the body to be dropped off to them. Am I that correct? is correct. Once we get to our cooler, then we'll notify the GBI where the body is. Nine times out of ten, it comes back the next day. Understood. And tells to transport that body. That's my due question. Due to the fact that the situation at hand. Good I answer. Good suicide or homicide. Good answer. But my, what I'm alluding to is, so when you picked up the body from wherever you picked up the remains from, and that first pickup brought you to our cooler. Is that a charge to that particular deputy or the coroner or whomever else that picked up that body at that moment in time? No, sir. There's no charge. There's no charge. Okay. 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 So I always thought that that was a that was the first pickup, and it was a cost. And then when you take the body from that point A now, which is at your your freezer to GBI, <coughs> then there's another cost. <coughs> that, that would be associated with that particular body. And I don't know, you, you guys help me out with these these, these numbers and these. Yeah. You, know, you understand what I mean? So, yeah. so, yeah. so, so my thoughts always have been, if, if you, depending on how many times you gotta pick up and move, and move the body, there's a cost that is incurred by the deputy or the coroner or whomever else. And somebody please help me with, with my math. They have a transport cost. Okay, oh, that's what I'm a There's a transport cost. Okay, so the first transfer transfer cost was to bring it back to our location. Our location. Okay. The now, second if, transfer if they cost. They go to the GBI. There will be a transport cost for that as well. Got it. Okay, hundred and seventy-five dollars. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Sixty-five. Okay. Okay. I, I, we'll get into the, the, the pennies. I just want to make sure that there's a cost. Trying to understand the, the numbers. Okay. So now, if by chance we've got to go back from GBI to pick up that body and bring them back and bring that body back to the funeral home now. Okay. Is that another cost? Is that no, sir. <coughs> Once that body is released by the GBI, mm -hmm. we're notified, and then we call that family member's funeral home that requested by the transfer to the funeral home. The funeral home goes to the GBI lab to set and picks up the remains. Good enough. However, however, hypothetically, mm -hmm. if by chance you guys had to pick it up and take it to the funeral home for whatever reason, I don't know if that could ever happen. Mm -hmm. If that did, that would be a cost. <coughs> that, I can't answer. I really don't know. There might be a cost for that. I think there will be a cost. It would be. Okay, all right. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking if my, my my math in my head shows me right, that could be possibly two to three times the amount of right. uh, 160, 75, or 80. 165, 165. 165. Okay, cool. All right. Because so, each deputy has a invoice they submit that's to the finance. That's exactly and what that, we need to. And that, that voucher or invoice 
said what transport they were, mm -hmm. what location it was, where it went, and how it was transported. Understood, understood. And, and, and I don't expect the, the exact, <clears throat> but I'm just trying to do some hypotheticals, you know, so we can see why uh, a budget of this magnitude could get out of whack. Yes. Based on the possibility of how you may have moved that body one, two, or three times. Don't know. Okay. Uh, one, one other quick question, though. So let's say hypothetically that uh, ha have you guys even thought about this? And this is probably more of a question for the corner. Thought about uh, using an outside source, let's say the funeral home or whomever else, to, to provide that type of a service and moving a body and look at that cost. And it, it, maybe you can't answer this, probably more of a corner question, you know, to see is there or could there be a cost savings to have <coughs> The funeral home uh, do that particular pickup or move, and, and 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 again, it would be a cost to us, but it could be also a cost savings depending upon you know what they charge, how much that is. But let's let's ask that we kind of give that some thought as to what that what 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 consideration and or cost that there could be to offset some of these numbers that we're looking at. That could be. So noted out. <coughs> Got it. Um, let me see what else I got. So outside of that, uh, I mean, I, I I don't have any other questions other than you know um, maybe on the next round are we anticipating the corner to kind of have a sit down with us? And I, I think you got your deputy here, um, the deputy corner that's here as well. I don't know if he can add to any of this. You know, any any <coughs> or, or could we or. If you if you come into the yeah okay and I don't mean to put you on the spot I'm just I, I just didn't want to didn't want to leave you out in case you want to kind of be a part of all the action so I didn't come here to speak oh okay but you're talking about okay the transport from the investigation to okay the, can you do me a favor though can you do me a favor to say your name for the record and let's do that part of it then we kind of yeah my capsule okay. okay okay got it but uh, it has to be transported by bonded corner to go to the GBI. Oh, God. It can't be a funeral home, just pick it up and, <coughs> and take it to the GBI. Got you. Okay, so that's the reason why. And, okay. and also, on the deal, let's store them in the cooler. If we've got one over there right now, we ain't even made a positive idea. We can't take him to the medical center. We, well, we can take him to the medical center, but we don't have a positive ID. To, we don't know how know his family or anything so he's got to be <coughs> he's got to stay with you guys until we kind of at least get past that right okay but if you take that body and pick him pick him or her up and move him someplace else is there an additional cost for those who are doing the transporting as we talked about whoever does the investigation that's 175 dollars if we take it to the medical center that's 165 another 165 well, that's the transport charge. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm then, just saying. Then, <coughs> like with the guys. Here's what I'm asking, though. I'm just making sure that we're, we're associating the cost with the cost, and every time you touch <coughs> that body and move it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not only concerned about the numbers. I'm more concerned about every time you touch it and move it, that there's a potential that's, that's cost. That's what I'm saying. Okay, all right. If, okay. if, <coughs> like for instance, this one over here, we've not made that invitation on, then. We don't know what your home to go to. If we have to bring him back to our cooler, there wouldn't be another charge for the cooler. Yeah, that's all I'm looking to. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about the numbers. Yeah. I'm more concerned mm -hmm. as to what you guys do. And yeah. as but like Larry said, mm -hmm. majority of the time, or almost always, when the GBI gets done with their the autopsy, they'll call whichever corner done an investigation, and by then they should have the funeral home and ask who it's released to. And then the funeral home go like pick up. Hopefully, the funeral home at that time can pick up that. Yeah, they, they, they do. Certified, right? They do if the family's chosen for. But but are there some instances where it requires you guys to go and get that body and take it to X funeral home because of I don't know what the reason <coughs> would be. But is that is that a possibility no, in most cases? Home, the funeral home that would be rare if it happened. Okay, it's but but there is a possibility. Oh, yeah, got you. Okay, okay. All right. Well, well, listen, thank you for your insight. Um, and I guess we'll wait for the other numbers. Mm -hmm. We'll wait to kind of see uh, <coughs> what it looks like. But this is only a budget. And, and I, I mean, I can speak 
not for a uh, vice chair on numbers, but there's quite a few that come back from other departments that we have to make some adjustments because of whatever the reasons are, but you know, it, it happens. Cause we don't, I'm assuming you guys don't know a count of what you guys anticipate the, the body count for April, May, well you got, for May I guess, do you guys have a body count for May? No, we're not what about June? You got something you got a number for June? We can give you a number down the road. Well, no, you we really can. can't because you don't know how well, we don't know how many people can do right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so. But okay. we can give you numbers from January up to, I would say, end of May. I was May. talking about June and July. No. Okay, know. I didn't think so. All right. Okay. Thank you. But I would like to add, oh, though, oh. if I may, um, okay. piggyback on what the Black Chair said about we don't know what the coroner does or what the investigators do when they go out to a scene. Okay. There's time they've gone on scenes in, in the past month. Mike, you can come back, please. In the past month, where they didn't have the bio hazmat suits, oh, that's why I know the right. victim they picked up during that particular time frame yes. had meningitis. Yes, and so they had to go and get treated, get shots, and take medication for that meningitis because you never know what that person has or the conditions of those homes that they go into. Right. So the job is what I'm like. If I would like, if I may not speak on half the corner, but do a ride along to see what they do. Right. to get a full understanding of what their job is mm -hmm. and the things they have to go through. Sometimes you see things that you would never imagine. My background is law enforcement. I worked homicide for years. Mm -hmm. And since I've been in this office, I've seen some things I've never seen in homicide. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have a tendency to take that stuff home with you. Right. So I would encourage those who would like to come over and visit the coroner's office, see what we do, mm -hmm. and do a ride along with the deputies and the coroner and see what the case is like when they go out. Gotcha, got you. But I, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up too, though, because I had asked again. That's why I was so concerned about, you know, how many suits that you guys have or not have, and all we, cause we, it, it took us almost a year just to get past you guys having these suits. Because I always thought that you guys had the suits before you guys went on that call and had to go into all the shots because of what you guys ran into, though. Not good. Well, I'd, I'd like to add too on that, on that budget. <laughs> I was with Randy for six years. You was what now? I was with Randy for okay. six years. Got you, got you. And I used my own vehicle, my own gas, my my own insurance. We didn't we didn't have a vehicle then. Okay. So their expenses was way lower then. And plus, I only got one hundred dollars back then for an investigation. I was supposed to get one seventy five all along, but I didn't get it. But anyway, I used my own vehicle. Okay. We own that we had a county van over there, but you had to jump it off, you know, I mean it, it just wouldn't run. So we used our own vehicles. Interesting. And that's why a lot of the expense is a lot more now than it was back then. So you're saying though that there are these are really true costs that you're saying we're dealing with now that maybe in the past that you guys just kinda said, We'll just eat it. I'll I'll just jump in my my Honda and just kind of... We didn't have anything other. I mean, we didn't have nothing for you. Got you. We, me and Wayne Rogers used to have a vehicle. Got you, got you. That's interesting. So, so got it. So now we may be incurring not any new costs. It just, the previous corner may have not added those costs onto the ticket. Well, it is new costs because we got two new vans. We got two vans over there and we got the cost of the vans. We got the cost and of the running, gas. Are they running? Got, are they running? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, okay. they're equipped. Okay. They're equipped now. We never had that till now. Got it. And that, that's a lot of added expense that we didn't have back then in the last tax administration. Got you, got you. And that's why it's a lot more now that people don't know. And and, and and then at that time, were you guys contracted or were you guys salary or were you guys? It was contracted. It was contracted at $100. Yeah. Contracted. And we did, we did get the 165 back then for transport, but all along, I was supposed to cut 175 over all those years. But I was told that 100 was all I was going to be able to get. So I either had to accept that or not do it. I like doing it, and, and I, I wouldn't still be around here eight years if I didn't, you know. Got it. Okay. So, uh, but that. that and, and was the $100 that you're speaking of? That was a one-time deal, whether you take the body up one, two, or four times, or was it equal? Because it, cause it sounded like you well, guys were it was for the investigation. I didn't do that many. We, we had a, the uh, chief deputy done majority of the investigation, but when I did do them, I and mean, I've done quite a few over okay. six years. Mm -hmm. 
and it would have added up. And, and I had we have to go to in service corner school every year, mm -hmm. and I asked the other corners in the other county about if they paid all their damn dues. But they said yeah, and they told me he said I believe I'd be asking for my extra money, was. <laughs> but <laughs> if I had, I wouldn't be here today probably. Yeah. And, and, and and then did you pay for your your classes and everything else that you? No, the county paid for the classes, oh, but okay. I provided my own vehicle, my own insurance, my own yeah. everything. Got it. Okay. And that's why this, and we only, had, even the county back then only had that one band, but like I say, it, it never was operational too much. So now we got two, and they are equipped. And that's why there's a lot more expense. There's a lot of stuff that people don't understand. And, and, and the professionalism and the whole makeup of what you're dealing with with the two vehicles and getting to and from kind of give you guys a different look. And, uh, it's way more professional looking the yes. Okay. Well, thank you. I didn't mean to pull you in. Oh, no, that's all right. I, I, didn't but, but, I didn't mean to say anything, and I'm certainly not a person to make and speak in front of people, but there's a few things that need to be known, and there's a few other things that need to be known that people don't realize. Got you. But, yeah, and like Larry said, <coughs> I'd love for some of y'all to go out on some of these calls for us. It's, it's not pretty. Well, I don't think you'll get too many people just jumping up and down no, here that, but I mean, you know, I believe, I'm a believer, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We would like for you to come to the operational office, see the daily operational office, how we have the system set up okay. in regards to our records management, our, our property room, uh -huh. and where we keep our uh, inventory and our evidence and everything of that nature. Right. I think once you get a picture, a full picture of how we are operating, Mm -hmm. On a daily basis, I think you'll be get a better understanding of what the duty and responsibility of other corners are, and also the corners duty and responsibility to the community as a service provided for those who lost a loved one. Got it. Got it. And I want one other thing too. Okay. <laughs> oh, you see, now you want to you got a lot of conversation. Now, so. <laughs> okay. As far as transparency, I don't think there's any county in this whole state of Georgia that's under the microscope any more than us. It's an open book. Anybody can come over there and say, there's nothing to hide, but anybody in this old county is welcome to come over there. The door will be wide open. Uh, we're scrutinized more than well, that. Well, let me say this, though. I think I, I, when I saw the, the, the news story of my friends back here, um, yeah. that, that they say you guys are never there, though. So, I mean, I don't know if they, can, they can't get in unless you guys are going to compete. I'm not Do you there a lot. The mat for them or, or you need a light on for them or something? I'm, I'm not there a lot because I'm out and about on this case. Oh, well, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. I, I stay pretty darn busy. Right. But, right. Right. Um, the only thing I noticed about that interview on the TV, was it right or wrong? Was it supposed to be three different days that they showed up? <coughs> oh, I guess, well, he, okay. he's not part of the conversation, so we the can't. Only, the only just thing keep, that I did notice. Just, just, just keep it amongst you and I. Okay, okay. okay. but yeah. if it was three days of what I heard, it was three days. Okay. The guy had the same suit on for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I understood. I understood. Okay, you know, but you know, but, but at the end of the day, uh, again, thank you uh, for your insight. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, next time we'll have uh, you know Renee here and kind of hopefully to answer some of these questions, you know, with more of uh, a directed uh, versus what you guys are trying to kind of give us as give best. Give you a snapshot. Yeah, yeah. So, what I'll do once we get back to, I'll make sure that I made some notes. Understood. And in our next session, we'll have a PowerPoint to present to show you everything we're doing from our record management to the number of deceased victims that we've had in the county from January to to the end of May. If that's pleasing for the board. Oh, I, I think I think that's 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 in line, I think. So at the end of the day now, yes, that's great, but I, if you get it sooner than later, then I think this board would probably want to see it even prior to <coughs> your nice you know, bells and whistle type presentation. Right. And we are working on the budget. We are looking at areas where we can save money on the budget. We're working on that as I speak right now. We're looking at that right now to save some money. We met with Madam Chair and we came up with a plan how we can save some money in certain areas of the corners off of the budget. Okay. Thank you again. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. And I yield back. Um, if you could just stay there for just a minute, um, Mr. Busley and um, Mr. Axel, if you could come back to the podium for just one second. I had an opportunity to dissect this budget and also Commissioner Gotti, you were correct, you sent me a letter. I did order an audit last year and it was uh, one that we found a couple of things that peaked out in terms of investigations. But I believe you mentioned other professional services uh, are out of whack. 
uh, those other professional services, I feel like I'm bonded with that coroner's budget right now. Uh, that is your popper funerals. So those are just something that uh, other professional services, that line item is driving out popper funerals. So those are the popper funerals that's in there. So that cost is almost something that you can't really put your put a big uh, control button on because we can't predict how many uh, the funeral homes called and they said this is the popper funeral. Send us the invoice, the information, and identify that these pay, uh, these citizens are indigent. So at that point, we have to pay. We have no choice. We pay nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. So that's the popper funerals. But I'm getting ready to move to that part-time line, which you that which is comprised of investigations, transport, in town and out of town, which would be the uh, crime lab. Uh, G <coughs> and looking at that area, the only thing that I can see was the freezer, the opportunity for our new cooler, which we are looking at that, the cooler, and we have some trays coming in by Tuesday, which will be able to store six uh, deceased bodies. Mm -hmm. And at that point, and also the only other thing, and I've, I've been managing budgets a very long time, that had an opportunity to just bring in that variance, or should I say narrow that variance, with the investigations. The coroner and I have had some in-depth conversations. She is performing investigations, but the part, if she don't sign off on it, that means that the actual uh, deputy coroner, if he's transporting and he signs, he's being paid. So those are the opportunities that we're looking at, that investigations piece. piece. Like I said, this year, 2018 budget is still <coughs> on, and that's why I believe in um, this is first quarter, and we have an opportunity to uh, reverse the variance like we have with other departments. And that's why I said I believe uh, August is what I'm looking for. We're on a 90-day diet. That's what I call it in terms of just some things that need to be done in performance. But as far as things, uh, I didn't see anything out of whack uh, that looked like uh, there was some criminal act. Uh, it's just that she's not signing. She's, she's actually out there. But if she doesn't sign that, if she doesn't sign that release, uh, if she doesn't sign the release, that means that there is a problem. That means that my deputy coordinator gets paid for both the transport plus the investigation. Also, I noticed in her very, in her budget, there are some accruals from last year. I, I don't know if you're familiar with journal entries. There were no journal entries for those particular items, and I'm not sure how much that be. That, that may be ten thousand dollars worth of accruals from last year, which which was 2017 budget. I've asked my finance team to pull me some numbers together. I'll look at that. that that's also going to hit that budget, and that shouldn't even be in there. So it may be ten thousand dollars that we didn't anticipate on accruals. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. So we'll look at that, but moving forward, I'm expecting all the accruals, if it's from the previous year, they should be resolved. I'm not sure if she's holding, the, the coroner is holding the documents, the invoices, but she needs to make sure that she responds to the finance department uh, in, a, in a timely manner with those accruals. And if you could, Mr. Axley, speak about investigations, because I had a concern about investigations versus this administration versus the last administration. You said that there were times, because you, you've you actually been with this department eight years, you said sometimes there were phone calls being made and just releasing the bodies and nobody was investigating. And I believe investigations are required by the state of Georgia. Can you explain that a little bit for me? Well, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't get asked that. But, <clears throat> but yeah, they're uh, in the previous administration, they, they were calls made from um, from the hospital and during the night, you know, that, and they were signed off. I mean, they were re released through the telephone call during the middle of the night and, and I guess during the day also. But <clears throat> I don't know that that was a, a great issue back then, but the thing that happened since, and, and I can't remember what time it happened. I heard it at the corner of school when I was in school. Uh, um, uh, at the corner school, there was a county, a body at one county released over telephone. And then the family wanted, uh, they, they uh, wanted an autopsy done on it. So there's about four places in North Georgia that I know of that will do an autopsy, a private autopsy. Well, when they got it there for the private autopsy, they found that there was a stab wound in the back. So it went from an accidental death to a homicide at the end. And that was because it was released on the telephone. Nobody went there 
and examine dead body. And that's one of the first questions that the medical examiners will ask us, have you examined the body? And we certainly don't want to send the body up there saying it was a body of those, and then they get up there and find a stab wound or even a blood <coughs> So in this administration, are they just performing uh, investigations just for just to make sure, or is it is it if, required by the state of Georgia that you if, conduct if an they're hospitalized less than 24 hours? It's mandatory that we go to the hospital on a corner cut. If they've been there for 24 hours, we don't get involved. <coughs> Any other questions for the board, Commissioner Ralph? Yeah, okay, just one one point. I I want to. And it was only peaked because of the, not necessarily testimony, because you're not sworn in, but because you spoke before the, the commission, which is, is the $175 and $165 mandated by the state as far as this is the amount we can it charge? Is, it is under chapter article 45 of the corner session. All right, so if you pay this function, you're required to get that amount. All right, so here, that might have been the missing piece. So, all right, we, we got this company that was being used as a pass-through for the prior corner. Mm -hmm. And you were being paid, you were supposed to be paid 175, but you were only paid 100. Where's the spread? That's what I asked. All right, so now my question is, is there some type of deferred compensation that we do, we owe him? We don't have to solve this now. But I, I just I just figured it out. Mm -hmm. All right, I just want to make a pen for this. It's something we'll take up later um, to sort of follow through on this and so I'll yield for that because if we owe him some type of compensation by law not what he worked out through his own I'm, I'm not gonna get into that because I, I think there's a legal angle there's some other angles to this but yet I just heard what this guy said that he, he put his heart he provided a function um, um, the laborers that do their wage it, it's it's no you don't you don't do employees that way so make it a pen We've gone long enough, and I think this, this Madam Chair, I thank you for giving us the time to talk about this. I mean, this is not uh, normal, but this is not a normal topic, and, but the public needs to hear it. So um, I made my point. I yield back. Okay. Any other questions before we move forward? Thank you so much, and we look forward to the follow-up uh, response and also the presentation from the coroner. Okay, thank, thank you. And our, uh, it'll be two weeks from now. Lisa, what is the date? Our next meeting. I would have asked you that right there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great presentation. And I'm quite sure the citizens are, uh, they have the information and that allows them to assess and uh, gather their thoughts leading up to our next meeting. June 4th is our next meeting. Okay, next we have our, on our, for our presentation, we have SPLOS update, Mr. Rich Lane. Thank you so much. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, my name is Rich Bolane, I'm with Moreland Altabelli Associates, and I'm the program <coughs> manager for the SPLOSH program, and I'm here to give you an update through the end of uh, April. Uh, would you, in lieu of time, would you like the abbreviated version? Okay. I uh, really want to talk about the money first. Uh, $100 million SPLOSH program, right now we're programmed at about $85 million, so uh, uh, Everything's fine so far. We still have buckets of money that have been unaccounted for. Uh, that's the spend plan versus actual, so we're a little bit behind the fire and EMS, but we have spent about $4 million in the fire. Transportation, same thing. We're a little bit behind the transportation, spent about $4 million there also. Parks and Rec, a little bit behind. We're at the, about 250 with Parks and Rec, but we got a bunch of work getting ready to bust open. Uh, program management, again, we're behind on us. We had our uh, task order go all the way to March. We're now in our second task order for splash year number two. <coughs> I'm going to try to fix this a little bit. This is a little crazy here. Yeah? So. Okay, what I wanted to show you here is we completed the finance, the revenues for splash year number one. We had a great March. I know it's hard to see, but we collected $2.2 million in March. So that was the 12 months of splash year number one. If you remember, our estimated revenue was about one, just under $2 million. Uh, we were expecting $23.9 million for the first year. We ended up collecting $23.5. So we're only $400,000 behind on our revenue collections uh, against the estimate. Works out to about $35,000 a month or just under 
two percent. So uh, what we promised was we we're going to try to get the 12 months collections. With the savings that we've realized on some of the projects, the uh, digital radio system, <coughs> the post road bridge, our recommendation is don't make any changes right now. Keep moving forward with the program. We're working down the prioritized list. The 400,000 that we're behind is not a, gr a great deal in the grand scheme of things, less than 2%. So our recommendation going into splash year two is just full steam ahead. Let's work the program and uh, keep moving forward. Uh, there's our collections. You can see them through for the whole 12 months. Man, this is just, yeah, you, you want to come on help me with this? And, uh, but there's the collections via the month. And you can see uh, March was 2.2 million. Uh, I know unemployment's down to 3.9. I hope everybody's back to work and spending money. That would be great. So, uh, but there's our 23.55 million that we've collected. Uh, this is just a bar chart show in uh, <coughs> collections per month. And then here's our, just the, the, the highlight, uh, our average 1.962. Again, we were looking for 1.99. <coughs> so we're, we're showing about 35,000 per month behind. And uh, our estimate was 23.9, we collected 23.5. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, just food for thought moving forward. Uh, we are on a weak uh, growth program. So we're adding 1%. Uh, starting in April of this year. So we'll get our collections at the end of May for April, where we were looking at just under $2 million a month. With the 1% increase, we're going to be looking for just over $2 million. So uh, I'll be looking, again, we need to be collecting $2 million a month as we move forward. <coughs> Bond program uh, payoff uh, for splash year number two, the numbers in red, $17.6 million. And our first payment will be due in October, uh, $1.3 million. And then the big payment, April of next year, the $16 million. Um, so as we're collecting these new revenues for splash year number two, all of that will be held in escrow until we have enough to make, meet our bond obligations. <coughs> OK, moving forward with the projects, fire EMS first. Uh, I promised you last month that we would have somebody come in once a quarter to update us on the digital radio system. Mr. Jay Nix with Motorola is here today. And uh, he's going to come up and give us a brief. Yeah, come on up. and. Uh, just, you know, give us an update on the digital radio system. Okay, so um, I'll give you a real quick overview. Could you First, state oh, your name again, please. My name is Jay Nix. I'm with Motorola Solutions. Thank you. And I'm a project manager for Dose County Project, B25 system. So basically, um, the project overview is that this is a nine-site simulcast system. Uh, there will be 10 channels, 800 megahertz at each site. Um, all of the sites will be connected with... Uh, either 6 gig or 11 gig microwave um, from each one of the tower sites and it'll be done in a ring configuration, which gives you more redundancy. Um, so that being said, we also, as a part of that, we also have the fire alerting system, which is also included in this. Um, that'll be for each fire station, there's 10 new uh, or 10 of the stations covering that. And it'll be actually tied into this system and be generated from dispatch at 911. Um, to give you a little bit of a site status on, on the sites right now, um, at the Douglas County 911 Center, um, they, we required a new monopole there before the microwave hop connectivity between uh, the sites, uh, the new existing or the new towers and the existing towers. And um, um, that, that monopole, we've already filed the FA for that monopole and acquired the FA for that. Um, we're waiting on the FCC. Uh, licensing and so forth to come back for that site, but that's that's where we stand on the monopole. We're still in good shape there, and so over the course of the next month and a half, we're going to be actually putting the foundation in at that monopole, and the monopole itself will be shipped, and we'll stack that tower. Okay, um, there are two existing sites that we're working with. One being owned by the city of Douglasville, and there's a uh, there is contingent on a IGA or government agreement to be signed. Uh, with the city of Douglasville and Douglas County on that tower. Um, Fire 13, which is a Fulton County tower site, it's existing tower. It's a 400 foot guide tower. And you would also be going on that tower with the, the signing and approval of a, of a government agreement between Fulton County and Douglas County for that site. Um, we have seven new tower sites. Uh, the first being we've identified being Fire 11. There'll be a tower located at Fire 11 in Douglas County, Fire 5. Fire 8, and then also another one at Bill Art Park. 
Um, we've already gotten the FAs filed on all of those towers, and um, we have not received anything back from the FAA yet. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, they set the uh, the Fire Five, I think we have, but uh, also the FCC is licensing. So um, with that coming coming back, then we'll then we'll be able to move forward with those sites. Um, also, there's three other sites that, that we're trying to acquire right now. Um, I've been working with uh, the chief and also with uh, the EMA director, Jason Miller, uh, with working with the school board on three sites, one in Lithia Springs, another Factory Shoals, and another in South Douglas. Now, we've also uh, um, actually identified alternate sites for each one of those locations, and um, those look probably the more promising than the alternate sites than possibly the school board sites. So that's why we're moving toward those alternate sites. Okay, um, from a standpoint of the fire alerting system, we kind of drop back to the fire alert <coughs> system. This will be a mock alert system. Um, it will be set up primarily to be handled through the, the uh, Douglas County network, uh, Ethernet type network, um, and then uh, the secondary also the radio <coughs> network itself. So it can be, it can actually, they would receive uh, those, those fire alerting from either one of those potential carriers. Um, and really that's about it. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? Any questions from the board? We're looking at alternative sites to the uh, school sites. <coughs> Lithia Springs, uh, South Douglas, and uh, what was the third? I didn't write fast enough. It was uh, Lithia Springs, Factory Shoals, and Factor, South, Factor South Shoals. Douglas. Okay. Uh, what was the problem with those sites? And was it an issue that the uh, school board would agree to them? Uh, they haven't returned any notice uh, either way yet. Mm -hmm. um, we did put together a presentation, or Chief put together a presentation, and gave it to them, letting them know that these towers would be. Uh, for public safety use, mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, I don't know that you've heard anything yet, haven't you? So we, we're trying to push the, the, the project forward because, you know, this project is really driven off of these tower sites. You've got to have all these tower sites to be able to give the coverage for in-building, uh, in the city, and an hour street for, for public safety. So, uh, I think we did have a meeting with the with the, with the school superintendent. Yeah, yeah. was that accurate? Uh -huh. Well, with, with his representative. With his representative. <laughs> okay, and, and Madam Chair, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I think yes. we'd ask you to interface with the, the school superintendent as well. What what is really what? Why are, are we getting a response from the school system about these tower sites? Because you're talking about alternatives, you're talking about probably having to buy land. Uh, one of them is actually the factory shows, if I'll, I'll break them off each. Factory shows is actually a piece of property that the city of Douglasville owns. Uh -huh. So that site would, land-wise, would not potentially cost anything. Uh, South Douglas would be the purchase of a new piece of property. All right. And then also um, <coughs> up at the Lithia Springs, um, we've identified a couple different locations. Our engineers are working through my engineers, our project engineers, are working through coverage and the microwave connectivity to verify that we won't have any problems if we go that way. Um, one of them being at um, the library, the other one being at um, the new the piece of property right across from Fire Station One, which is actually slated right now, I think, for senior citizens. Mm -hmm. Piece of property. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. So, and then the, the architect is supposed to be looking <coughs> first thing to see if a uh, eighty by eighty or a hundred by hundred. Uh, site would fit there, and right. he, he said that answer could come <coughs> fairly quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I would just uh, <coughs> observation. It would look like uh, it would be beneficial to the, the entire county and the school system <coughs> in terms of public safety, uh, and public safety in particular children in the schools. That would right. have a, a, a cost-effective, but mainly an effective right. uh, digital radio system. And uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that the school system will uh, will cooperate, help help us uh, partner uh, with this system. I don't know what else we can do other, other than ask. Uh, I yield back. Okay, and also, um, Mark, uh, we had some discussions with uh, the school superintendent. I believe uh, Chief 
could y'all just give us an update as to what this, you know, some of the reasons why we can't uh, place those towers or it's not uh, <coughs> from the school system? Can you just share this? Well, maybe? they haven't given us a definite answer, so definite, yes okay. or no, yet. Yeah. Because we have working with um, But there were a couple concerns they had that, that um, they were sort of thinking in terms of cell towers. These are not cell towers, they're totally different. Okay. Um, they were thinking that kids could climb the towers. Kids can't climb the towers because there will be a fence around the around the site. Nobody will be able to enter. Um, <coughs> there any other uh, uh, the, the, perception? The, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Aesthetics. Aesthetics. Yeah, aesthetics. But it would allow them full coverage inside those schools. And I think there's some schools now that there are issues with SROs having radio coverage getting out. <coughs> and it would give them. You know, the best cover coverage okay. possible at those sites. Optimal coverage. Okay. okay. And I just wanted to basically <coughs> just convey to the commissioner that we passed some dialogue, but we're still waiting on an answer. It's just a you know, response. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the things that come to mind right now that was probably some of the items that are just kind of uh, placing the hesitation on the responses, but we're still waiting on the response from the school. Right. Thank you. So anybody else? Any other discussion? Thank commissioner you. Carter? Raise her hand. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was really in interested in the fair play area. Okay. And um, I know there's a stream that separates the school property from the ballpark down there. And you have to have setbacks so that you got a lot of dead area. Can you put something like a tower in the uh, flood zone <coughs> of, the, of the streams? No, it would it would really uh, if we did that they would have to be elevated the mm -hmm. foundation for the building because you're talking about putting in quite a bit of money from the equipment standpoint mm -hmm. and you wouldn't want that in the course of flood money. And have we checked with the, the Dark River Reservoir? Would we <coughs> down there in case it does. No. Get well, we 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 looked at in just last few days. There's a piece of property that's directly across from the existing fire station and uh, Lithium Springs Elementary. Um, there's a piece of property there. Like I said, what we require is anywhere from 80 by 80 to 100 by 100, which is not a very big, huge piece of property. Mm -hmm. It's less than, you know, half acre. So. But uh, not being able to find these two sites that we're talking about is holding up the whole project. Right. We, have, we have some options, but we don't need to discuss the specific pieces of property but it, in this it, setting. They, We'll discuss them in the work in the executive session. But until now. we nail these down, it's, it's, yes, it's causing a delay. Yeah, which is why we're proceeding with it. With no school board answer, we have to proceed with option B. All right. All right. We're trying to be uh, proactive, not reactive. So. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Carter. Commissioner Carter. Yeah, I mean, but, but to, to, to Matt and Guy's point, um, I, I think. Um, I think about Riverside, Thornton Road. Um, what's your coverage down there? I mean, how, how, how well? Well, we'll guarantee, we're going to guarantee the coverage throughout the county as part of the contract. What's our current coverage? Uh, spotty, poor, spotty at best. Right. Uh, and, and that's, I mean, obviously they head put river. Um, I, I get it. And some of the things, at least on the public safety side. Um, uh, will cell phone towers or antennas or whatever it's called be put on there? I'm not a technologist, so I'm just, do y'all know what we use? Will there be some repurposing or, or, or leverage of that asset to have other things on it? If, if we own the actual tower, if once we build the towers and actually build the towers, we'll have an opportunity to lease space to sell your company. There's no requirement to, but that would be a way to bring rent to the future on, you know, like anything we build, as there's always, as we talked about, their ongoing cost and stuff like that. So that would be that would be a way to bring start bringing revenue in on the towers that we own and we, we build. Um, so that would that is that is a possibility to do that. The reason I bring it up in, 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 in it's not so much as revenue but safety. You know, living on Riverside and, and some of my colleagues know that I'm forever dropping calls. So if I'm calling nine one one, it, it's choppy, sloppy, whatever you want to call it. it, it I, mean, I know we're down the hill, we got the woods. I mean, I get it. I mean, we, you guys know that, so I'm talking more for the record. It says that that's something that, that's 
it, it's not a nice to have. It's like it, it goes both ways. You, you know, obviously deputies need to be able to communicate back across and do what it has to do. But we also need to be able to communicate with you, and there needs to be a partnership. And so I, I don't want that. That's just not a nice to have. So the committee that's responsible, let's not forsake that. Um, maybe not in immediate, but at some point, if we own it, you, you can't neglect a certain pocket um, for the sake of, of, of safety. So not so much the revenue, but for the sake of going first. Well, that, all, all, through, all of the towers are designed to carry three carriers. Okay. Right now, so. All right. And, um, Along with the existing equipment. Okay. And I won't belabor the point about the, uh, I agree with the county minister. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up the real estate later. So I'll, I'll yield back, Chair. Okay. Yep. And I believe our target is 97% um, <coughs> for coverage. You know, I know 100% may be possible. It was 95, I think. 90, 95, so it's 95? 95. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? Thank you so much for your Thank presentation. You. Oh, on the spot, we don't. Can I talk about the spot still? No, it's, 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 it's still, still going. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say something. That was just a presentation. Right. Okay, Mr. Bermuda. Okay, I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, the fire EMS, the procurements are going good. Uh, the two ambulances for this year are on order. Uh, that's right, I'm going to go fast. Okay. The fire trucks, the paperwork, the RFP is in the process so that we can get the one fire truck for next year out. Uh, that, there it is right there. Uh, aerial ladder truck is done. We're just, we've got some more miscellaneous equipment that we're going to outfit the truck with. It was $100,000 for that, and I think there's about 20, 25 left. So <coughs> finishing that up. Station three renovations. We have completed the drawings on station three renovations. I believe they're in procurement, and they are to advertise this week, and we should be receiving bids in two 30 to three, days. 30 days. So we'll be receiving bids for the revised station three construction drawings uh, in about a month. So uh, <coughs> moving forward with that. And then the new uh, sign, uh, change order was approved last month. That last remaining sign is in fabrication, so as soon as we get that, we'll get that installed and that'll close that one out also. And staff vehicles for 2018, two pickups and an expedition are on order. So uh, that those orders have been processed. And we added this F100. This is the training center. The only reason we put it in this month's report is because well, I understand there's been official name change to the training center, so we just updated our PMIS, we got the right name in there. And again, that doesn't start until September of next year, but uh, uh, we just want to get the name updated. And that is for fire EMS. Moving on to transportation. First one up for transportation is the 2018 resurfacing program. That's all done, it's actually out on the street and we'll be taking bids on June 8th. So uh, we'll get the paving bids in and then uh, uh, take a look at them and come back to you for a recommendation for award for the 2018 paving program. Riverside Parkway street lights. Since last month, where we uh, elevated the priority with the Greystone Power, they've made some good progress. Uh, I went through this morning. I think they got about two more weeks of work, so by the end of this month, they should be done. After the spay and neuter event, I went through that night and from 92 all the way up to tributary, those lights are burning, so half of them are burning. They're working on the Thornton Roadside, so a couple more weeks they'll have the rest of those lights in and all of them will be burning. Lee Road Extension, we had a $75,000 change order last month uh, added to the scope of work, so uh, there's now $150,000 associated with that job, and we talked to the planners, it looks like we should, in about September, uh, late September, early October, we should get that report in our hands. So uh, that's moving forward. Riverside Parkway, Rockhouse Road traffic signal. Uh, I don't know if you went, had been through there, but there's uh, were two variable message boards out there, one on each side, that today will start the 30-day burn-in. So they'll have yellow lights flashing along Riverside, red lights flashing coming out of the two properties perpendicular to Riverside and we'll burn that for 30 days. The only other thing we have left is the permanent uh, crosswalks there. You don't want to put those permanent crosswalks in until at least the, the lights are flashing. Otherwise, people get a, they get comfortable. So uh, all we got left to do is uh, strike it and then uh, 30 days we'll get them burn, uh, burning permanently. Stewart Mill Road, Reynolds Road. Uh, this is on your agenda later in the presentation and tomorrow night, so uh, 
uh, but we're moving forward to get the design done there. Bright Star Road, John West Road, uh, we have preliminary plans where they're under review. We've got our first construction estimate associated with that, so uh, that one's moving forward. Sweetwater Church and Doris Road, Paulding County is still working on the revised civil drawings. Douglas County has the traffic signals gone to the electrical engineer. He's working on that. We're expecting that back within a month, and then we'll send that up to Paulding County. They'll incorporate that into their civil design and then we'll move forward with the construction of that intersection. Chapel Hill Road intersections, that's the same engineer from uh, John West. Uh, they're in design and we're expecting the preliminary plans in about a month. So uh, uh, we'll see that coming down the road. Highway 5 Douglas Boulevard. Uh, Miguel, I think you've got surveyors looking at right of way and seeing where the existing right of way is and what kind of right of way takes we would need for that right turn lane coming up Highway 5, so that's moving moving forward a little bit. And Highway 92, Anawaki Road, I know we've talked about scope, trying to figure out what type of scope of work we want to do out there to get <coughs> that done. The three uh, schools, and that's actually on this agenda too, you'll see that a little bit. We went out for bid for the engineering services. We were a little disappointed. We only got one proposal back, but it's on the agenda to move forward with the uh, design engineering of the three schools. So uh, we'll get the sidewalks designed for Lithia Springs Elementary, Chestnut Log Middle, and then uh, New Manchester High School, and uh, get those designed and get that work moving forward. Uh, transportation equipment, I think there's one pickup truck. For 2018, we're working with Miguel. He's got some trucks he wants to get, so we're working with him on that. We'll get those on order. Next up is Parks and Recreation. pages here. All right, first up is Boundary Waters. Uh, we're about 98% done with the design. Uh, we have three, I call them uh, color schematics that came from the engineer. We're going to take those to the Parks and Recreation Committee, and it's basically just pick the color pattern. I know the roofs are going to be red, but there's a couple of different brick patterns and color patterns, so we're going to take those to the Parks and Rec, get their final approval and then we'll get those plans finished and we'll get those out on the street for construction. With that will be the soccer field light. Uh, we talked to Bill. Bill, who's going to talk to Moscow, see how long they'll hold their price. We're hoping they'll hold that price that they gave us last year through this summer so that we can get it all packaged into one contract, get those lights on the soccer field. <coughs> Deer Lake Park Tennis Court, uh, we received two proposals. Uh, they are under review. And we'll be coming to you, I think it's the next board meeting with the recommendation for award to the engineer for that design services at Deer Lake Park. Uh, the multi-purpose rec center, uh, we still have executed contracts. I know Bill's working with the architect to get the executed contracts. As soon as we get the executed contracts, we'll get the design kickoff and get that job moving forward. That's true. And that's the same status with the senior center that was awarded last month. and. Uh, Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, refresh my memory. Uh, if you back up to the Deer Lake Tennis Court, we're yes. seeing a new lighting. What well, is the new lighting? I, I don't recall. Is that for the entire uh, park or new lighting just for the tennis court? I think it's just for the tennis court. <coughs> I'm not okay. mistaken. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Lithia Springs Senior Center, same thing. That was awarded by the Board of Commissioners. We're just waiting on the executing contracts and we'll get the design kickoff meeting going. Get this started. <coughs> Bill R. Park. And uh, Fair Play Park, uh, the design is ongoing. Alan Bell's doing the design on that. He's about 30% done with the design, and we're expecting the design completion this summer. Post Road Park, the score boxes were installed, so that was done. And then the miscellaneous equipment, I think Gary, I think he got one pickup truck on order that we're waiting on. And then 2018, you got $100,000, and I know we've got some lawnmowers and a pickup and uh, an infield machine. So uh, we're working with Parks and Rec to get them the requested equipment. And then program management, we have, we're on our second task order, $737,000. We just started with that, so uh, we just began on that. And that's the end of the status update, but I did, okay. 
Any other questions from the board? Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. I, I know we're, we are won't keep this a little bit. Um, back up to this. Um, we're betting on $2 million a month. Is that what I heard you say? That's Rich? right. That's with the weak growth uh, economic model where it's 2 million, I think 19,000. 16,000, so it's just over 2 million a month. It's a 1% increase. Right, so, so weak economic growth. And so we had this big blip, $2.3 million. That might have been uh, everybody got their taxes. They went out and spent their, their one time, one off, and that, that was that, right? So I'll, uh, obviously, it, it's steady. You don't count on that. I mean, I, I couldn't, I mean, I'm just putting a pin in it um, that we're not betting on a $2.3 million. <coughs> It was an anomaly, so okay. Yep. Uh, I think that's safe the way you and uh, you working through that. Uh, my, my second question was uh, regarding the street lights. I just came up with street lights. I, I literally went from Thorn Road to Fair Road this morning just because I was coming here, and uh, of course I saw the signs and, and I was like, "Ooh, look!" Um, <coughs> but yet I'm seeing the posts up. So that there, there's no lamps. There's no um, bulbs. There's nothing. It's just sitting there. Again, I come back to, I listened to your comments, said that, you know, we escalated last month as a priority. And I'm like, well, how does Greystone not know that this was a priority when everything that we're doing, whether it's fire trucks or everything else, is being done, right? Everything with the, with the SPLOS is a priority. If it's programmed, this wasn't so not one-off that we just add this to the conversation. It was programmed. And I, I just take, I, I, I look in it, 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 incredulously like, how is this not a priority? Especially since it was outsourced. So I can understand if Greystone were going through a hurricane and they're reshuffling resources uh, down to the Caribbeans or wherever the case may be. We do what we do, right? We mutual aid. I get it. But this was outsourced to a contractor. So I, 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 I one more time for my citizens who's like, well, y'all gonna say that y'all gonna bring this forth, Commissioner. We, it is, the, it is the most painstaking project that we got. It's, it's like it shouldn't have been this pump. And so I'm, I'm, I have low confidence right now for the record that I, I just, I mean, so I'm, I'm gonna equate it to my um, bike lanes that like I'm, I'm not quite <coughs> yet, right? I, um, I, I just, I'm not, we're, we're not being given the assurance that like this, I mean, you keep telling us that well, we just, we, we've now found out it was your report is like, Really? That's the conversation Greystone is having with us? It's like, and, and you're conveying this, so I'm, I'm just saying that you're the message. I, I, I'd like to get a little bit more confidence, right? A little bit more assurance that we got this. We're going to bring this in. Keep giving me the message that, well, we just didn't know which party, my bad. We'll get on it. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Y'all got to change that narrative. Um, there, there has to be a better way. We're, we're, this is not just a light bulb. We're, we're committing not only to lights, but a, an ongoing operation. And again, this is this was important. This is a, a new vision that we're trying to move this forward. And I, I guess rather not hear that again, that, okay, it just wasn't a priority. That, that just doesn't sit well, um, seeing that we're paying the bills. Um, you know, we, we didn't ask them to accept this contract. We didn't ask them to move on this, right? We, you didn't have to bid on it. Right? And so when, when somebody says we didn't know it was recorded, what do you think we were putting on the street for us? I mean, I, I'm just saying, right? This, this wasn't an optional consideration. I, I think that's important, just um, to, to advocate for what the citizens are paying for. You just, just like you want those fire trucks to come in and you want, just like um, that guy, <coughs> uh, you know, hey, we're getting behind on the t uh, telecommunications tower. Right. Exactly. We got to keep moving. Exactly. Right, I'm, just, I'm just bringing a point. All right, let's shift gears here. Uh, will we get a chance to take a look at the design? I know it's probably going to go through Parks and Rec, but will we be able to get a chance to look at the design for um, the community center? Yes, sir. What is the process for that? I'm just curious of the process. Well, there will be some public meetings. Yeah. Well, we've already had <clears throat> You've done a couple of design charrettes. Is that correct? That's in the plan for the, the community center when get the contract awarded get the architect on board, 
He's going to take his idea, get it on paper, he'll design it to about a 10 or 15 percent level, yeah. and then we'll do design charrettes for the public. <coughs> and we'll have the floor plan, we'll have a rough sketch of what it's going to look like, yeah. and then we'll go out and have a couple of public meetings and say, hey, here's what we're thinking. We, we, we've had a number of, we've got a number of index cards with people's comments, but we will do an official design charrette where we have a public meeting probably down there at the, at the site <coughs> and uh, the show them what we're thinking. Well. And the senior center too, absolutely. Okay. All right, I won't, I won't belabor it. I mean, I just want to make sure that the public has an opportunity to see it. Absolutely. More importantly, them than the commission, but of course the commission will want to weigh in. I mean, they just want to be able to see it. Uh, because it's, a, it's not just about my district, but it's more about the broader. Hey, I need to weigh in on this. Is, is this the new look and feel of, 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 of um, our assets, our vertical assets? And um, if we're, we're creating a new standard for a new going forward deadlift, then it's important that everybody gets to weigh in. So I just want to. Know. That makes sense. My last point is this gets into um, the first. Um, you made a comment about the telecommunications, and a consideration was um, where the senior center is currently going. Um, will there be a compromise <coughs> in the space for that area? In other words, if you're going to take 80 by 100, it's already a self uh, a constrained area. Um, will this constrain it even more by putting? This tower right there is a, is a, a site consideration because again, you don't want to make that site, you don't want to make it small. You don't want to take away parking. Can you talk about that? You know, that's what we're looking at to determine whether or not it will be a burden on the site plan. Um, so we don't know the answer to that yet. <coughs> As of right now, the only thing that's been done is I've measured the senior center, the parking lots, that area directly around it with the detention pond. And determine the acreage of that. Will that fit on that a side of that size? Yes, it will. Um, but we haven't gone through the design process yet, so that's to be determined. All right, and, and I'm, I'm glad my colleagues back because I, I wanted to hear this because this is important. Y'all take this up at enough, you know, take this up appropriately. But it was already uh, a small site, right? So I, I, I guess you got you got some conflicting interests here. Right, and it needs to be resolved. But to, um, you, you almost in, in putting it, it may, be, it may be an appropriate site. But if you kill the senior center, the, the appropriateness of it, or the consideration of that site, then uh, we ain't got to solve this here. But it, it's something that needs to really be looked at. It says, I mean, even if it's only an 80 by 100, that 80 by 100 is still necessary for parking or whatever space because it was already a tight site. Mm -hmm. It's already so. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. The if point. it doesn't fit, we have other options. Okay. Good. I, I'm just <coughs> without knowing the design, though, for the right. senior center, and right. you're taking consideration for a, a site tower. Say, yeah, it'll fit, but yet you haven't looked at the site design yet. Listen, it just commissioner, you get my point. Take mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. I'm chair. I'm good. I yield. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Commissioner Guider. Yes. Um, you know, I understand your concern. Stuart Mill, uh, West Stuart Mill. You're not involved in that, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's great to see all that dirt being moved, <laughs> finally, <laughs> after all these years. But on the Reynolds Road in Stuart Mill, um, we are ready to uh, accept a uh, design, is that right? On item 13 on today's agenda is the recommendation to award. When will they start moving <coughs> dirt? They got to finish the design. They got $110,000 in design to finish first. Once we get the design, well, this is just to pick the people that. Uh, this is the Jacobs contract to get them to finish the design of that intersection. Oh, okay, yes. so how long are we talking about? 110,000, four months maybe, three, months. three or four months to finish the design, and then we'll get the uh, get it out on the street for construction. <coughs> for bid, yeah, we've got to put it out for bid. Okay. Um, and the Bright Star and John West Road. Uh, you know, school will be out pretty soon. It'd be nice if we could do that intersection before school comes back in session <laughs> in August. So, uh, <coughs> is that going to happen? That's not going to happen because it's still in design. And when do you expect the design complete for that one? Completed in June. You'll have John, John West. Uh -huh. Yeah. It just seems like that would be such an easy design. I mean, 
I, I could probably take a napkin and draw it out myself. <laughs> I do not understand why it's taking so long. It's just a through road and some. We're all engineers. It's a process. You've got to work the process. At the time, we just we just approved too. Correct. Absolutely. They only started they just a couple started. months ago. Yeah. Yeah, but it seems like the easy ones are taking forever. Same way with Dars Road. Uh, we thought that was going to be a, a slam dunk, you know. Uh, but I thought at the last meeting that you said that Paulding County had finished their design. They were doing their looking at the right of way takes and minimizing the right of way takes. Right. And they had renovated the design. Yeah. Have they? Has, I don't think it's. Is it done? Well, they they finalized an aspect of the design, but not the entire design. But enough for our traffic engineer to begin their design. Okay, so what does that entail as far as our traffic engineer? Uh, putting the what kind of red lights? Whether it's one red light or a yep. turn light, and this, that, the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you have an estimated time of completion of that job? I do not. Okay. I'd love to give you one, but I don't have one. I'd love for you to. I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to hang out. Part of dependent on Pauline County. Yeah, absolutely. And they, I know they've had personnel turnovers and they've had all kinds of problems up there. Well, That's why I hate this. The problem with Reynolds Road and then uh, what's going on at the West Stuart Mill, Stuart Mill Road mm -hmm. intersection, that road is getting tore up off. Uh, even Yancey Road, that, is it Yancey Road that goes? I came through there the other day and hit the biggest pothole and my whole front end fell out. <laughs> but it, um, the roads are getting terrible and I don't guess we can pave those roads until we finish these intersections. I'll leave that to Miguel. That's correct. Can we patch them? Because the pa uh, it is, it, it, Stuart Mill is in terrible shape. Nancy Rose is in, <coughs> in terrible shape. We can do patching and minor maintenance, but anything major we would have to rip out when we do the intersection so it would not be costly. Well, at least patch them because some of them are pretty bad holes. There's one real bad hole right after you turn <coughs> off of Chapel Hill Road onto where Stuart Mill and it's right down there, right around the church. And I, I hit that one too. It seems like my car is a, is a magnet for these spots. But anyway, uh, push them along as much as you can. I'm trying, you know that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Just like, I, I just got a couple <laughs> questions. So, um, one of which, I was going to go back to what Ann was talking about, but I think I got to stay away from that. Um, <coughs> the, the sidewalks, the sidewalk project, you said you got one bid. You got one bid. Does it look any way of being promising, or you just like, well, oh, we got to go back and start this thing all over again? No, it's, we, we got one proposal from a design engineer, it, on, a design engineer. Mm -hmm. It's on the agenda to award its item 12. So you'll, you'll, I don't want to steal Bill Peacock's thunder, but it's on the agenda today. Recommend for award. So, yeah. uh, but we were disappointed. All the outreach we did and all the phone calls I know, we I did. Thought, I thought I would come back with a whole lot more than that. We, though, we did too. You guys, you guys promised us more than that. Yep. And we reached out to everybody, and basically what they said was, well, we were, we we didn't have the pre the design pre qualifications to do the design work. We just want to pour the concrete on the ground. So they want to do the construction work. So we did get one one engineering company who's going to do the design work, and then we're expecting the folks that we talk to they'll bid the construction after the design is complete. Got you. So okay, all righty. And, and so um, the shortfall, and now that we've got this nice little increase, uh, uh, good to know. Speaking to the vice chairman conversation earlier. So how did it position us? from uh, the, 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 the shortfall we've had in the in previous years and months. Mm -hmm. In this particular month, kind of sort of, can you give me an idea of where we are to date based <laughs> on you know this? Sure. After the first 12 months, we're $400,000 behind on our okay. collections. Understood. Uh, but the recommendation moving forward is we've realized some decent savings on the digital radio system, uh -huh. on the post road bridge, 
and some other projects where we've saved a little bit of money. That offsets the $400,000 underrun that we're seeing in the revenues. So the recommendation is keep moving <coughs> forward with the program. We're working down that prioritization list. Right. We don't need to make any changes right now. Mm -hmm. Keep going down that prioritization list and we can reevaluate it in another year. I mean, you know I watch so, this every month, but let, let's keep marching forward and then take a look in another year. Well, I, mean, I, I don't want to see us just jump and grab that, that savings from the radio and every place else and, and kind of dump it someplace else. But, uh, but just the mere fact of, you know, the county is, is you know, outspending, because I can count for at least one of these guys out there was my life, so. But uh, let's look at that savings and, and I'm more concerned, with, not concerned, but I want to talk more about that particular saving. I mean, that increase. How did it offset, and forget about the radio savings and all the other stuff, how, did, how much did it offset us to kind of play catch up? Because we're always still playing catch up for what we've been off, you know, every month. The last month, March, $2.24 million, one of the best months we ever have. Understood. Uh, not sure what it equates to. You know, tax re tax returns might have been it. The unemployment is three point nine percent. I hope a lot of people are working, spending money again. Uh, I can't wait to see this coming months. Well, don't don't be, expect that again. No. Don't expect it. But again, so again, though, what kind of say with that? How far are we off now to date as to what we've lost in previous months? You know, because we, we, we use a, a, a gauge of 1, 1. 1.9, I think it was, 1.99 or somewhere like that. We're less than 2% below where we fall. Okay, now that's what I'm looking for. So, so that, that's not bad. I mean, it's not a bad place to be, though. No, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, good. That's why I want to make sure that part of it. Uh, okay. Oh. And to the radio system, um, you got the uh, a couple of locations. That I, I was just here talking about, it, like the site for the senior citizens layout. Let's not put the cart before the horse. We need to find out with that site because that, that site, I'm still questioning if we're going to be able to even place that center there. But we're going to do everything we can to kind of you know, strategically place it you know, to the north, the south, how it works out. So uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves to say we can place a tower there as well. Unless, well, let me first, with, with first making sure that we can place the center, and then we'll look at the tower. And I don't know how to, you know, kind of what kind of order that you guys are envisioning this, you know, so. Well, that's item one on the design kickoff meeting. As soon as we get the executed contract, Mark and I talked last week and I said, hey, when you get the designer on board, the first thing we need to ask is, is it feasible to put a 80 by 80 or 100 by 100 footprint on that layout right. for a 911 tower? So and I've already talked to him, mm -hmm. and so asked him to answer two <clears> questions. <throat> One, will the senior center fit? Two, right. yeah. can you put a tile on this? He's yes. supposed to answer both of those questions. So we're not putting the cart before the horse. Understood. Understood. So, okay. Good enough. Yeah, tower will go first. Then right, right, right. Then we come back and say, oh, we can't put the car in, but the car got to be only three cars can park now because we had ten. You know, like, oh, my. No, so that's what I don't want to see. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, and last but not least, I know you probably was going to cover this, but I don't know, I don't want to, you know, get ahead of you, though, but how are we coming along with that minority, that, that, that business structure that we got, not business structure, that, that we trying to make sure that, you know, we, we look at that local and, and I'm, I'm looking. It's on the screen behind me. I was ready to go. Okay, so can I, <laughs> I guess I can yield and then I can kind of comment sure. and, and hold my yeah. comments to kind of see what that looks like and kind of where you guys are and yeah. how great a job that you guys are doing with that. So, and so I'll just kind of. We asked me last month to, to update. Yes. So what so we've got, we got updated, updated it. I'll finish my question. <clears throat> and where we are right now, Currently, we have 49 vendors under contract. So we've had purchase orders, contracts, all kinds of things where we're buying stuff. 49 vendors, 15 of them are local within Douglas County limits. 15 of them are within 30 miles of Douglas County. 10 of the vendors are farther than 30 miles, and nine of them are out of state. So roughly, you know, 60% of them are within 30 miles of Douglas County. Uh, this is just a pie chart that shows it, uh, starting with the, the light blue up top, that's the local vendors. Uh, the yellow is the vendors within 30 miles. Uh, the burgundy is further than 30 miles, and then the out-of-state, 18%, uh, okay? Now, this looks great, but I'm not happy with this, because what you're showing is here's all our local vendors that we're in business with. 
Okay, so we got a whole laundry list of folks, but they're they're only getting one percent of the money so far. So we've got a whole bunch of people that we're working with, but in the grand scheme of things, I think we've done eight point seven million dollars to date. They're only getting one percent of that. Yeah. So one of the things ninety nine percent includes all of ambulances, fire Correct. trucks, ladder trucks. Yeah, and that's um, the, the big <coughs> what, what hit this. Excuse it was we just paid the one million dollars for the ladder truck right we just invoiced the motorola uh -huh. million dollar bill uh -huh. we paid the fire trucks so we had a, a huge uptick in the money we spent and then when when jessica updated this i'm like and oh good god only one percent is going to the local folks right but that was the specialty type yes know, so so yes i can see that i mean mm -hmm. you know and well, some of them we have the graystone power 184,000 for the street lights again we haven't paid them anything so that hasn't been well, this is only based on paid invoices through the end of April. So, but if we got to do a better job of getting more money to the local folks, we, we've got a number of local well, it's folks. It's there, though. I'm hearing you correctly. It's there. It's just that it, we haven't accounted for it yet. I mean, it's, it's had to be paid. Some of it hasn't been paid yet. So, I, I think it's there based on what you just showed me earlier. Okay. But it, need, it needs to be. It needs oh, yeah, to yeah. be well, higher. The good part is it needs to be higher. I would agree. Yeah. But I think we're getting there. Um, however, I mean, I'm not comfortable with where we are, but only that we're, where we are with that 1% is based on the fact that paid invoices and so on. So, we, I mean, so yeah. I'm not, I want to be fair yeah. with, with you guys and what you guys are yeah. doing. So, yeah. okay, I uh, yield back. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, we'll move on. All right. Thank you. Just one question <clears throat> for you that we're going to move on. Um, <clears throat> if you could for me, could you conduct a trust but verify exercise with a graystone? Because when I'm coming through here to sign, I'm beginning to see some lights on unless they have some some type of translucent so type no. of lights. I don't know what they have, but I do see lights. They're on from tributary up to 92. Oh, uh, the lights okay. from uh, tributary down. The luminaires are up there. They're just not yeah. powered up. Okay. They're, they're LED lights. They're very small. They're hard to see, but they're they're up on top of the poles. Okay. They just they're ju they're not connected yet. That's okay. all. Okay. And the only confidence I have in them is they have bigger equipment out there. They have, they had those little micro backhoes. Now they actually have got a backhoe that has some muscle to it. So I think they're digging a lot quicker than they were. So okay. Again, not too much confidence, but a little. Confidence. <clears throat> but thank you so much. For Thanks. Doing the form. And then also we have a presentation from Senator Dunzella James and State Representative Kimberly Alexander. That presentation will take place at tomorrow's Board of Commissioners meeting. And then our next presentation will be a legislative update from uh, our Director of External Affairs, Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Stanley, the Director of External Affairs, and I'm just going to give a brief, I have about 30 slides, but I'm going <laughs> to have to go through them a little quicker than I um, anticipated due to time, but um, this is the legislative uh, session update um, that we are doing. Um, we're doing it this week because we want to give the governor an opportunity to go through and um, decide what bills he would go forward with and sign and then what bills he would lead up. Um, so um, in recapping the legislative session, um, but following the uh, Douglas County annual legislative planning and engagement cycle um, over the summer and through the fall, we were able to come up with 12 legislative priorities for the county. Um, and these legislative priorities were after going to the committee meetings uh, and meetings with ACCG and NACO, we were able to come up with the legislative priorities, uh, state legislative priorities, as well as we came up with federal legislative priorities. We presented those legislative priorities to our delegation on November 30th, 2017, and those priorities were approved by the Board of Commissioners on December 5th of 2017. The legislative session this year began January 8th, and it concluded March 30th. <coughs> so now we'll start with some of the bills that were, were successful that will be impacting Douglas County in the future. Um, HB 751. And that's the 911 Local Government Authority Bill. Now, this bill um, was presented to you all last year, 
um, but prior to the governor vetoing it. The governor felt that the bill um, gave this quasi-authority too much authority, and so therefore he vetoed that bill, but signed an executive order creating the authority, and then this legislation just went ahead and codified that to provide for the uh, legislation um, for the 911 local government authority. The next bill um, is the HB 673, which is prohibited um, distracted driving. You probably have heard a lot about this bill. This bill will require going forward after July 1st of this year for all drivers to use um, some sort of wireless um, communication versus handheld. So if you get caught um, using your phone, your first phone will be $50. They can go all the way up to $150. Um, um, we're really excited about this bill, HB 329. This was one of the bills that did not make it forward last year. <clears throat> this bill um, will provide for changes to the, to the TAVT uh, state and local distributions. And what um, currently right now, under the formula that's being used, the uh, county is getting about 51% of um, the TAVT proceeds. Going forward, we'll be getting 65% of those proceeds, and 35% of those proceeds will be going to the state. Um, it'll also lower the uh, rate, TABT rate on um, vehicles that were previously titled in another, in another state from 7% to 3%. Um, HB 61, we will, uh, this bill passed, it was signed by the governor, and this will give us the right to collect sales tax on internet and out of state retailers. Um, and so it creates a special vendor called a delivery retailer, and that's anyone who does more than 250 thousand dollars for retail sales to be delivered in Georgia. Um, but right now, there is a case pending before the Supreme Court, um, South Dakota versus Wayfair, and we'll have to see what the Supreme Court rules on whether or not this will be legal for us to collect those funds. <coughs> Another bill that will go along with HB 61 is the bill that will now allow local governments to review and get information from the Georgia Department of Revenue um, of the current listing of vendors. Currently, we cannot get that information, but this bill will allow us to do so. <coughs> this bill will be um, confidential, the information will be confidential, and it has to be discussed during executive session. Um, HB 696, this is our high-tech data center bill, and what this bill did was it expanded an already existing um, exemption to um, multi-located um, high, de high data tech centers. So now um, companies like Switch, it's actually called a Switch bill, can get this exemption if they invest more than $250 million over a 10-year period into the community. And this is um, the uh, picture from the governor's signing, and you'll see um, some Douglas County representation um, at that bill signing. Now here are some unsuccessful bills that could have impacted Douglas County. The first one, and this is a, a success for the county, um, being able to prohibit the placement of uh, property tax bills. So this bill did not go forward, so therefore we can continue to um, place any other fees, such as our streetlight fees, on our property tax bills. Um, there were some broadband bills on right-of-way preemptions, SB 426, HB 533, and HB 887. These bills would have significantly impacted the way that we could regulate our right-of-ways, so it was a success that these bills did not go forward. Um, because we would have had a lot of issues with regulating the, the right-of-ways. And then HB 430. This bill would have provided for a 5% pay raise for all constitutional officers and magistrates. And that would have been on top of their COLAs, their longevity increases, and any fees for personal compensation. <coughs> now this bill was successful. Um, this is the bill that I get the most questions about, and it's the HB 930, which is the Regional Transit Governance and Funding Legislation. This is, establishes the ATL, which is also the Atlanta Transit Link Authority, and it creates a new governance structure for the 13 metro area counties. <coughs> Excuse me. And it also <coughs> outlines new, a new transit fund, funding, which allows the counties to do a mass transit spot. The jurisdiction of the ATL will include 13 metro counties. We'll see that Douglas County is one of those counties. And the powers for this um, entity will include sole coordination of planning and dispersing of federal and state funding for transit within the jurisdiction. They also have other powers which include eminent domain, 
Um, they provide the transit services within the jurisdiction, the appointment of the ex executive director of the ATL Authority, and that has already been done. The interim um, executive director is Chris Tomlinson, who was over Greta and Sarda. Um, the board will be composed of 16 members. You'll have one appointed by the government, governor, who's the board chairman, um, the commissioner of transportation. He'll have a, a position because of his position. Um, two members by the lieutenant governor, two members by the speaker of the house, and then there will be 10 authority districts, and each authority district will have one member to represent that authority district. Um, that member will come from a caucus. Now, that caucus will include all the House of Representatives, the senators, state senators, the chairperson of each county, one mayor from all the municipalities, so all the mayors have to get together and pick one mayor to vote, and then the mayor of the city of Atlanta, if it um, if the district goes into the city of Atlanta. Each person who's appointed must be a resident of the uh, authority district and must have substantial experience in that area. And um, this board has to be in place no later than December 1st of 2018. <coughs> now this is the proposed transit district areas. Uh, Douglas County falls into District 8. We are in the district with South Cobb, um, South of Smyrna, all of Douglas County and South Fulton, anything south of Atlanta. So the person who represents our area will come from that district. <clears throat> now this is the mass transportation SPLOS. Um, for the 13 county metro region, in order to finance a transit project, we may raise an additional sales tax up to 1% in um, increments of 0 0.05. Um, and that can be done for up to 30 years. Um, in order to do that, there has to be a meeting um, of all of the, the county and all of the municipalities, and they have to come together and come up with what projects that they want to submit to the ATL. And at that point, the ATL can deny or approve those projects. Um, in the um, information that's submitted to the ATL, we have to have the specific projects, the approximate cost, who will operate, them, who will operate the projects, and then the maximum period for the program. And then the referendum will be placed on the ballot the, at the next countywide election. <clears throat> now, the existing regional transit providers, MARTA will keep all of the same powers, but they will be the exclusive provider for rail. Greta has until July 1st of 2020 to transfer their powers over to the ATL. Um, but they will keep the TIP program, the DRI program, and um, the board structure and state funding mechanism for Greta are also preserved in this legislation. CERTA will have until July 1st of 2021 to t um, take their powers over to the ATL. However, they will still have power over uh, the GTIB and um, tolling and the GO Transit program. So, are there any questions? <laughs> any questions from the commissioner? I'm trying to go. Commissioner Geiger. Are we going to have somebody explain this bill to us? Uh, by detail, in detail. Yes, I can give you a much more detailed um, presentation. I, I knew for time's sake I couldn't go through it. Um, well, I've reached out to two legislators and got conflicted mm -hmm. information. I, I think some of them don't even know yet what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to and I don't know how they would know, so. Yes, uh, I, I, can, I can get with you. I've read the whole bill. I've gone over it. Um, I've sat in several sessions, and I was involved in the process. Um, so I can go over with you in detail every aspect of the bill, if you'd like. Could you put, could you, I would love to. Yes. Okay. I, would, <laughs> so I can explain it. Yeah. I can speak. Yes. Okay. It, it is a complicated bill. It's 77 <laughs> pages, and a lot of people don't understand. I have found that in my discussions with people. But I will, I will make sure that I give you all the details that you need. The one question I asked was, uh, what if the, can, uh, the district does not, it, it turns down the, the sales tax for the, uh, the T-Squash, I guess. Yeah, then the project doesn't happen. It doesn't get funded. So that basically, when you come up with the project, it goes to the ATL. The ATL can say, yes, you can go forward with the referendum. If you go through forward with the <coughs> referendum, and it doesn't pass, and the project doesn't happen. And when, um, what is the difference in light rail? I saw the word mm -hmm. light, the terminology light rail, mm -hmm. uh, in contrast to uh, the Mars rail. Well, and this is something that's not specifically in the bill, but the light rail, from my understanding, is more of like your trolley systems. 
things of that nature, and Miguel may can help me out with that. Um, and uh, <coughs> the, the, the heavy roll is more of your martyr trains. And, um, but I understand this doesn't include the extended martyr out, is what I was told. So, but the rail. Yeah, there's, there's I, the buses we already have in Yeah. So. There's no provision in there. It's whatever transportation projects that the authority comes up with or that the we, we come up with and present to the authority. So the specific projects, those will have to be determined by when the authority gets together and meets or by each jurisdiction. Okay. What projects? I was just told that it, uh, it did not include rail. There, the, right, there's no because it, rail costs billions of dollars, yeah. not millions, but but, billions. but it could include rail if that's what the the authority gets together and, and decides, and, and and the money is there to do it. But right now, there's no specific projects in the in the bill. Okay, I hear back. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Commissioner Watson, Vice Chairman Watson? Maybe going to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, Agreed, um, Director Stewart Stanley. I, I think a more detailed um, elaboration is necessary. Um, and, and again, I, I won't get in your conversation with, with Madam Guider. Uh, but for the Transportation Committee, I'd like to also bring somebody from the state here mm -hmm. at, at some point um, to give us um, to supplement the conversation, please. Uh, but there, there, there's more specific questions we want to. We don't. It's not interpretive that we're looking for. It's more like definitive. Um, so we can make appropriate um, considerations to put forth for the Board of Commissioners regarding Greta. Um, so um, we'll, we'll take it offline and just want to know. Um, you, you mentioned something about authority, um, and one of the things that, um, does it prohibit a, an authority being created at the local level to, to, to make sure there's proper um, community oversight? Um, and, and so that's one, for example, it's one of those type of things. I understand there's the regional, but then when it comes down to local, um, uh, making sure that there's proper governance, especially if you're going to do a referendum, um, it's almost like you need to keep it separate, almost like a development authority. Let it let it run on its own, make sure it has its proper oversight. So it's that type of specific question that we need to get answered, um, um, or at least get some intelligence on so, so we know what we're doing going forward. So just make a note of that. Um, um, then the last thing is, um, um, and in turn, um, Madam Governor, <coughs> about the rail, um, you, you've got MARTA, mm -hmm. right, that, that is the, the de facto third party operator, mm -hmm. we'll put it that way. Uh, but there's also local considerations within those counties of their own, and, and my understanding is that um, perhaps there's a coexistence. I mean, there's only going to be one rail provider, and to her point, that, that was right. the whole point of talking to MARTA three, you know, three years ago, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, they're the best in the game, right? They're the only in the game. So let's have a conversation with them so we can understand how much it costs when we used three years ago. Uh, but, but my point was, in, in considering what, I think it's more of what it isn't, is the question. What doesn't it do? I, I mean, I, we'll figure out, I mean, I get what they do, but I also want to know what they don't do so that we can the gap. Because what all I saw in this legislation was just, it was just an enablement. They just enabled local. It's like, in their party opinion, they just sort of enabled um, um, the local jurisdictions to sort of come up with this, but they're like, guys, that ain't a lot of money. To your point, it, like that hundred million dollars, that's for the whole mm -hmm. state. Yeah. That's not just this region. If you read it, it's like, oh, they will consume that. The Fulton can consume all that by itself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's sort of like, don't get too happy. I mean, y'all need to really look at this bill because it's, it's from what I read. It's like, this ain't what you think. And so it's a shifting. It's okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. I thank um, Tanner Beach, Representative Senators, for what they did. I thank the governor. I thank the General Assembly. Great job. But I mean, as it relates to a local <coughs> conversation, I'm sitting here like, that may not be what we're looking for. I mean, forget the past. Don't bring Atlanta over here. Type of commentary, right? It's like, do we need to really look at this? So that's. I think we're all in the, we're coming to the same answer for different reasons, right. but we both need to really have an understanding of what this is about. So can you make sure you take yes, that I will line? definitely do so. I do. Okay, thank you so much, commissioners. You have the um, your minutes, uh, and tomorrow we will approve these minutes. So please take a look at them, uh, and we will approve tomorrow. Proclamations. We have two proclamations, and uh, Chief Spencer.
Could you please come forward and you just talk about these briefly. One is the uh, EMS Week 2018, and the next one is EMS for Children's Day in Douglas County. That's staff number four and five. If you could yes, ma'am. Uh, this, this is an annual proclamation that we do just recognizing our uh, EMTs, firefighters, first responders for uh, what they do out in the field each and every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second one is uh, uh, special uh, just for the children. So uh, we take care of it all, but uh, we thought appropriate to uh, recognize. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Thank you. We look forward to tomorrow. To have four and five. To, did you, you covered both, right, Chief? Four and five. Okay, I just want to make sure. All right, County Administrator, any business? Oh, no, no. Okay, next we have tab number six. Tab number six, authorization to approve a contract with Ideal Smart Energy Incorporation for consulting services for the construction of a homeless shelter known as Sanctuary Village and authorizing chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Judge Bo McLean. sick all weekend so forgive my voice first of all um, this won't take but a couple minutes uh, I've previously presented to you and you've previously approved the sanctuary village concept but to reiterate sanctuary village is a vision to provide housing for the homeless and combine that with the existing case management mental health um, and addiction treatment resources that we already have in place through the accountability courts. So the vision is to take an existing program that's already paid for through county funding and a state grant, combine that with housing, and bring our homeless population into that uh, structure so they can no longer be homeless, so they can get the treatment they need, uh, get access to work, transportation, and the things they need to do to come out of the woods. Uh, some time ago, uh, we've been operating actually one phase of that at the landfill, the old GSO house, successfully for a year with no problems, no concerns, no instances. We currently have four women in residence there. We're limited to that number because of existing fire safety codes. We can't put any more residents in that uh, uh, structure. And some time ago, uh, some of the commissioners came to me and said, uh, we're vacating the old animal shelter property. It's being demolished. There's two double wide trailers there that have no use. Uh, perhaps you could make use of that uh, for your concept. And it seemed like a cost-effective solution, a reasonable solution to the issue. So we engaged an architect to draw architectural plans which have been completed. And the vision is to take those double-wide trailers uh, and convert them into three-unit efficiency housing units on that site and bring three more trailers onto the old animal shelter site that the school system is going to give to us at no cost <coughs> Uh, on a government to government transfer uh, and then establish Sanctuary Village at that location. Uh, one point I want to make to have absolute crystal 100% clarity is that zero taxpayer dollars are being expended on this project. None. It's completely and totally being financed through the donations, through volunteer labor, uh, donated materials as well as some funds from the <coughs> drug abuse treatment and education uh, fine surcharge fund that is restricted by law to be used for drug ad abuse treatment and education programs of which we operate here in Douglas County. So we're not using any taxpayer funds, it's not a budget item and there is zero expectation that we will lose any taxpayer funds going forward. 
Um, we've completed the architectural drawings. Uh, we've had a sewer contractor come out there and look at the site multiple times to see what uh, sewage improvements we're going to have to make. Uh, we are going to have to make some sewage improvements. We may have to bid that out. We'll have to see. Um, we're, we're looking at exactly what that will cost, and if the cost is such that it has to go to be a bidded item, then we'll have to do that. But doing that, we anticipate another septic tank and additional field lines to uh, accommodate the needs of the project. Uh, that's sort of a brief synopsis, brief summary, which brings us to the point we're at today, which is to introduce Mr. Larry Tony. <coughs> Step up here, Larry. You gonna throw my logo up there? <coughs> what do I have to do? I need you to bring up the presentation on your phone so I can email it. Oh, uh, well, I was, uh, uh, Mr. Teal stole my calendar clerk from me. <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking, if I can just figure out a way to steal her back <laughs> and get her to do something for me, okay, can you, can you know, do that? I should be able to. All right. I wanted to bring up our logo just to let you look at it in case you haven't seen it, um, <coughs> which is also free, by the way. That's the vision, is partnership between the government, between uh, the business community, the ministry community to do things creatively without uh, <coughs> taxpayer funds. One of the things we have to do is have a contractor. We've got to comply with every building code uh, that, that you guys have, every fire safety code, everything has to be permitted. Uh, we've been working very successfully with the developmental services and with <coughs> environmental health and looking at all the requirements for the project. The county has been extremely cooperative with us, uh, giving us concierge service as far as I'm concerned on those issues. None of those issues have been a concern at all. It's gone very smoothly. But uh, uh, needed, need to have a licensed contractor to oversee the work. Also wanted to uh, ensure there was no liability in the county. Uh, so that Mr. Tony is going to provide his general liability uh, insurance documents to the county just in case somebody's worried. Maybe somebody's going to get hurt on the job or, you know, hit their thumb with a nail or cut their finger or whatever. And I know everyone's always worried about being sued all the time. So Mr. Tony, as part of the agreement that's before the board for approval today, is going to provide uh, his insurance coverage to the county to the risk office so they'll have that. He also has workers' compensation coverage, although I don't think that would apply because we're not going to have any uh, paid employees there that would be covered by workers' comp, but he has it just in case. All this has been submitted to legal and approved, and I just wanted to summarize where we're at, which is we're ready to begin construction. Uh, we'd like to start this month. Uh, if you approve uh, Mr. Tony who's lived here in Douglas County uh, for about 30 years. Uh, he's a local builder, local contractor. He's part of the uh, uh, Local Builders Association. He's built commercial buildings. He's built residences. Uh, by coincidence, he built the county attorney's house in his neighborhood. Uh, and he's a good friend of mine. And he's willing to donate his services to the citizens of Douglas County the sum of one dollar per year which is also not taxpayer funds that came out of my pocket so i wanted to give larry this dollar thank you Jim. thank you publicly for uh being a service to douglas county and to the homeless by agreeing to take on this project of overseeing sanctuary village which uh, is going to come up any moment larry do you have anything you want to just share with the board and the persons present. I would just like to say what a Mr. Tony, an honor could. it is to. Mr. Uh, Tony, <coughs> Mr. Tony, if you could come to the mic, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. thank you, and just uh, yes, state your name again for the. I would just. We've been friends for a long time, and when he came to me, we had lunch one day, and he said, "Would, would you help me with this project?" And I said, "You bet, you bet." What a great guy! What a community leader we have here. This guy thinks or believes that people deserve a second chance, and this kind of this is what this is kind of all about. 
I'm really excited about it. I thank you, Board of Commissioners, for your support and the resources that you're <coughs> providing us to get this thing done. Um, it, it's really exciting, and uh, I appreciate <coughs> the opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any questions? Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Paul. Uh, I guess it would be a legal, legal issue. Uh, <coughs> shouldn't uh, the dollar be donated to the county? We accept it legally, and then we use that dollar to, to pay Mr. Tony. So, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the contract the contract with the county. I overrule that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I accept that. I yield. Uh, well, you know, Commissioner Mulk here, uh, you and I are old enough to remember the concept of a dollar a year man. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the dollar a year between, man. Yeah. Few and far between. Few and far between. But in the uh, Depression era, the World War I era, the World War II era, there were men of business <coughs> accomplishment yep. like Mr. Tony that stepped forward to serve their country uh, in a time of need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to help manage the work and business of the country that need to be done in <coughs> World War One, World War II. But the law required they be paid. Mm -hmm. So they agreed to take one dollar. And uh, I said, Larry, will you take a dollar? <laughs> he said he would. Great. One more. Thank you. Okay, any other commissioner item? Yes, Judge. Um, now, it doesn't just stop with housing, I assume. Your, your, plan, your sanctuary village. Is it going to be some kind of training, mm -hmm. some kind of work related thing? Yes. Uh, transportation? Well, what that's what I made reference to when I talked about treatment, case management, <coughs> uh, and so forth. But to be more specific, in previous presentations to the board, I pointed out that there are many, many people in America that have mental <coughs> health problems. They have addiction issues and other issues, and they're not homeless. There's lots of people that have a place to live who have alcohol issues and drug <coughs> issues and mental health issues, but they're not homeless. And the difference is the lack of a support structure. Uh, the lack of someone to walk alongside of them and help them with transportation, to help them with a, a <coughs> ID, to help them find a job, uh, to help them get to where they need to go, and to uh, get them mental health and substance abuse treatment if needed. <coughs> so that's the overarching vision here, is to take this existing program that we already have uh, and marry it to the homeless population and use the provision of housing as the encouragement to them. If you want to live in my housing, you're going to have to work my program. If you don't work my program, I'm going to have to kick you out. And that's the accountability piece. So absolutely, that, that's the vision. Uh, and we're, we have already been connecting people with employment, with GED, uh, we, we've got uh, folks in our accountability corps that have come out of the court with diesel mechanic certifications through the ARC, uh, with GED through West Central Tech. We've got some that are in college now instead of in prison. Uh, it costs $19,777 to incarcerate someone in the state of Georgia for a year. If you multiply our average census in the accountability courts, the felony courts of 85 people times $19,770, that's $1.7 million that you save by keeping them out instead of putting them in. So that's a very big part of our plan. And just as recently as last week, Larry and I had lunch with uh, Breezy Stratton, and we're talking about creating a structure to take the resources that she has available, the job training and job placement resources, and marry them to the participants in our program. Will this be for men, or men and women, <clears throat> or what? Both. In the sanctuary village, 
Well, that's something that's going to be subject to adjustment. We're going to have to figure out a way. To, right now, we have women at the location. We're, we're not going to mix the populations. I'll put it that way. Okay. Um, I think that, that was mainly for the public. <laughs> we're looking at some other options through some of the churches in the community or talking to us about letting us use some of their housing. As part of the concept, we've got a local business in Villa Rica that's talking to us about using part of their business to house people. So we go where the resources are at. Okay. Okay. Um, Vice Chairman Robson. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll be there very quick. Um, no, I, I appreciate this um, effort. Um, I just want, when I heard you, I just want to clarify um, use of funds and I want to make sure our director of finance understands that um, will services that are provided within this homeless shelter, seeing that we're marrying mental health and substance abuse, will funds <coughs> that we've allocated um, through the granting uh, process here, appropriation by the Board of Commissioners, will that flow into this area? And if so, do we have a notation of that, uh, Jennifer, that, that we, we can capture this? I'm just curious who can answer that. Yeah. I think I understand your question. Uh, yeah. Our existing structure will be servicing these folks who are already paid to do it. Okay. All right. So it, it doesn't matter where the location is then? No. All right. So we're just going to give our people more work. <coughs> okay. All right. I, I'm just trying to make sure I follow the money. Um, we said there would no, be no dollars used in Sanctuary Village, but the provision of the services are, but these are people that are already on the books. I just, uh, I, I wanted to make sure I, what I was hearing. Well, it's kind of like this. Mr. Pruitt, our coordinator, he gets paid whether we have 50 participants in the program or 100. Right. Uh, Ms. Alexander, our case manager, she gets paid whether we have 25 <coughs> participants or 150 participants. Okay. So we're going to use what we already have. Okay. We're not asking for any additional tax dollars uh, from the Board of Commissioners. Okay, so, so I guess you get where I'm going. I'm always trying to anticipate. So I was trying to see in this year's budget cycle, since we have this sanctuary village, and you're providing services there, case management and so forth, well, is there an expectation that I need to make appropriations for that? What I'm hearing you say is, well, we've already got somebody who's providing those services, and we're just going to marry these two together. Yes, sir. And that person, I, I just want, I needed to hear it. That's all. No anticipation to add to the county's share of the. So, so we're okay with what we're already doing. You've got it covered. Yes, sir. That's all I was asking. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Judge McClain and Mr. Tony, for what you're doing to support you. the homeless <coughs> population here in Douglas County. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you, sir. All right, tab number seven. Tab number seven is authorization to approve an inmate housing agreement between Douglas County Sheriff's Office and the City of Douglasville and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Mr. I mean, Juan Wizenhart. Did I say Dwayne? Is it Dwayne? Yes, ma'am, it is. I have it right, Dwayne. And what is your, is it? Major. Major. I want to make sure I like that. Yes, I didn't have it on my notes. Major. Major Wizenhart, please. Present I'll keep this as brief as y'all like. Uh, this is essentially the same agreement that we've entered into with the city in the past years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've made one change to it, though. This was under the recommendation of our uh, current medical health provider at our facility. Currently, what they do is for any on-site medical treatment, they do out itemized billing. And over the past two years, they've crunched some numbers and made a determination on what we're actually spending per inmate per day. And we've added a dollar sixty-six to the contract for the first twelve months, and then after twelve months, we'll go up two percent. Mm -hmm. And this contract would be for a period of twenty-four months, and then at that point, we would reevaluate. Okay. Any questions for the manager? Sounds good. Self-explanatory. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Tab number eight: authorization to renew the plan service agreement with Johnson Controls for the Boundary Waters Aquatic Center at a cost of five thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars and sixty-nine cents, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> 
We are moving. This is our uh, annual agreement uh, that we have with Johnson Controls in order to do all the preventive maintenance down at the Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. And the uh, recommendation comes from the recommendation oversight committee, and the funds are budgeted. Okay. Any questions from the board? Sounds good. I'll self explanatory. We'll move to tab number nine authorization for the use of Bill Art <coughs> Park as a site location for a radio tower for the Douglas County Fire and EMS Department and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we were approached by Chief uh, Spencer <coughs> to get, uh, put a tower in Bill Art Park. So uh, the chief and I went out and looked at the location and uh, we determined that it wouldn't have any effect on the park operation. And uh, we took that to the Recreation Oversight Committee and the Oversight Committee uh, recommended that we proceed, go forward with it. Okay, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner we have the map pulled up on the screen, yeah. Madam Chair. <coughs> and Scott, if you'll show them where. We're talking this area right up here. Tennis court. <laughs> you also have a map in your, you should have a map in your documents. Okay. It's uh, just on the north end of the football field. It's in an area that's uh, really too small and has no <laughs> use and really too small to do anything with as far as park, park operation. Mm -hmm. okay. And that existing tower that's there is not suitable for, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would talk to Jason Morrow and also our consultant. Um, um, you got a tower right here. You notice all these cell phones, uh, there's like four different antennas on here. So it's like there's no room for our stuff. So we can, it's not feasible, even if there were room on it, the, script, the requirements that we have for, um, for public safety radio towers, or a block greater than the cell phone thing. If your cell phone goes, that's no big deal. If our public safety radio system goes down, it's a huge deal. So that, that's kind of why, that's why we're at a, um, want to do another tower so we can build it to our standards and that way um, on that land. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Director <coughs> Mulholland. Any other questions for Director Mulholland? Mm -hmm. We have a question for you. Yes. Did you go to the microphone? Yes. Commissioner Geiger once again. Yes, uh, I just wanted to ask if we they would not interfere with each other? No, they had to do a study on that. Uh, uh, Jay and Dix and I, uh, from our have talked about that. After okay, they get going, the study is going to make sure. The, the tower they have around does not have any what they call microwaves, and that's usually their problem. If uh, a um, radio antenna site has a microwaves on it, that's normally what causes uh, the interference with the other ones. Um, so uh, so the, the studies will have to be done, as always to make sure you can do some changes to, to avoid that, but it has to be looked at in any radio site. Okay. And we've already done preliminary studies <coughs> on the microwave and on the RF and whatever. Uh, our tower is going to be taller than that tower. It'll be a little so it will be really above it. Just a little bit. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> That's actually going the opposite way, too. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Mitchell, yeah. I believe you yeah. have a question for me. Yeah, just, just for clarity, so are you saying the microwave? Uh, would have an issue if we use them, or it don't it won't have an issue even no, if we did. It's a, the yeah. microwave is totally line of sight. Could you bring that up to the microphone? Just the microwave is totally line of sight, so um, it's a point to point link. Right. Mm -hmm. So we made sure that the direction in which this link has to go is going between two different tower locations. That it does not interfere by the existing tower right now. So if I'm hearing you correctly, then the microwave wouldn't matter on this tower or the other tower. The There's not anything on the current tower microwave wise right now. Yeah, but could there be a possibility that that could? But as long as you're licensed to it, mm -hmm. in other words, we put the tower up, mm -hmm. you're licensed to it, then if somebody come and tried to license a microwave on this, it would have to be also <coughs> approved by you. You wouldn't have a problem with it. And would that come to us before? <coughs> that would be, it would come through the FCC and the FCC would notify you that they, they were they want to do that. And, and, and then it would be more or less you can't or you can based on <coughs> based on yeah. what right, right based what frequency it is and where it was going. Yeah. Okay, so we're safe then. Yes. That's what we're dealing with. Okay. Okay. I yield. Okay. All right. I believe that's it. Thank you all so much for your presentation. <coughs> the next. next we'll move to tab number ten. Uh the recommend Mill Holland again authorization to approve an intergovernmental agreement with Fulton County. 
and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final review. Could you tell us what this is? Yes, this is, uh, this is one of the radio um, tower sites that we have. We got into uh, talking to with uh, Fulton County instead of building our, uh, our own tower out there. This is kind of original plan to work out an agreement with them. Instead of building, spending the money to build a tower, use their existing public safety tower, put our antenna on that just outside Fulton County. And that, uh, and they, of course, when you go in to ask people what they want to let you do these things, everybody wants something, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So there just happens to be an old tower there. Instead of charging you rent forever, if you will do this one-time cost of taking down our old tower that is no, that is, that is, uh, no longer viable, We'll let you put your stuff and build your building on our property for, for free, other than pay, taking down the old tower. So it's just the what well, they what well, they want back to allow us to do, and it you know so it helps everybody. So this uh, this agreement does is you know um, lays out the <coughs> ground rules subject to legal review over you know us taking down the tower uh, the cost on thirty seven thousand dollars to take down the old tower. Mm -hmm. But renting that space, when I, when I checked on it, is anywhere from four to $5,000 a month. If we went and found a site that was soon, we had to pay rent to somebody to put our stuff on their uh, their existing tower. If it would work, that's what you're looking at, paying each month forever. So this way we never pay, we never pay you. If we do this, we <coughs> take it down, we're done, and they let us do our stuff. We pay our own car, take our own stuff, and we're good to go. So we'll break even in about eight months. Yes, is this swamps? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Sounds like Commissioner Dyer has some. Well, I just uh, <coughs> think that the uh, explanation there should be have more detail. It just says an agreement with Fulton mm -hmm. County. So if you ever search in records, you can't find. <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm, 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 I'm <coughs> <change> it. <coughs> it just needs some more verbs. Some more Joe gave an explanation of why we're doing, why we're, yes. why we're helping why the full man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> And I think legal um, Stephanie Tom Thompson is here today. I'm um, so I'm quite sure we'll look, get it up, keep it up, to make sure along with uh, Jennifer uh, Moore. Okay, any questions? Oh, what well, these glasses can you permission? Rob said I cannot see with these glasses. Um, okay, Madam Chair. Um, so this has nothing to do with um, the ring of tower that we talked about in the previous question. Yeah, here's one is part. Your this is the one that was one of the existing sites. Okay, so in another jurisdiction. Okay. All right. So there's no cause. So there you go. Well, stay with me. Okay. So we're paying costs in another jurisdiction. It's beneficial, right? But I'm, I'm going somewhere. Um, so we're we're incurring these costs. We're gonna put this tower up. No problem. Um, so we're, I'm trying to find why do we have to be in a different jurisdiction? Is it just because of topography and it helps to complete the coverage? I'm well, the, you've got you got two scenarios. One of them is that you don't have to build a new tower in that area because, excuse me, that Fire 13 tower is located right there, um, county line more or less, Douglas County and Fulton County. So it really covers a lot of Douglas County, provides a lot of coverage there. And that, that area of the county. And so <clears throat> not having to build that tower and being able not having to build a new tower using that tower, then then it saves the county money overall term, long term. Yeah, no, I, I get the incremental. I, I, I'm okay with that, the math. I was just um, I'm li listening to the logic. Um, uh, again, so there's a there's a reason that you partner with, with other counties, um, and it's a mutual benefit. Um, and it, 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 there are costs from time to time um, that we may have to incur if it, if, if it serves the whole. And so I, I just, I need to hear that, um, the logic. I'm like, okay, now are we going to a different jurisdiction, right, um, that we couldn't find a solution that was just inherent within our county? If you someone answered my question, um, I think I'm good. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> The funding source is flux. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of that whole makeup. And, and it is, I guess I can see the cost savings because we're just tearing down some, something that they've got over there, 37,000 or something. I think it was okay. Okay. Um, but with that, with this agreement, I got the intergovernmental agreement that we'll have to fold. 
is there are, are we the uh -huh. only one that will be on this particular tower or should we expect Fulton County to kind of start saying okay now that we've done this favor for you guys and you guys got this tower we want to also you know hopefully we'll be at the peak of the, the tower I'm assuming well actually uh, Fulton County is already on the existing tower. oh they are okay okay Fulton, we built this tower back in uh, when the system was expanded for Fulton County okay and uh, the new tower, the, what happened is they had an older tower that was 400 foot. Okay. The newer tower is also 400 foot, but it is set uh, up uh, more public safety. That original tower was built back in like nine, late 1980s. Okay. So it was uh, an older tower. Okay. And um, so Fulton County said we needed, you know, we needed a tower. We built that tower, and then they never put appropriated funds, I guess, to take that tower down. Right. So they looked at this as a, hey, it's a win-win from those kind of standpoint because you'll get the coverage, you'll get to put your tower or antennas and lines on anywhere on the tower you need to. Uh -huh. And if you know if, if you'll, they requested if you will take down this tower, we'll never charge you any fees for being on the tower. Wow. So I mean, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty. That's a sweetheart deal. deal. It makes me nervous, though. <laughs> you know. Well, the good thing about it is, is if any, if they were to add anybody to that tower. Uh -huh. More than likely, it would be public safety. Okay. But from a standpoint of public safety, the other thing is, is that the intermod studies would have to be done from a light, from a frequency standpoint to yeah. make sure they didn't interfere <coughs> with two existing public safety systems. Right. And, and is that an agreement that we'll have <coughs> to assure us that we don't get crossed up with trying to make a dollar now, Fulton County? You, you know, because if it's in their best interest, say, now I need to rent to whomever <coughs> else to. Um, to get there, I mean, I, I just want to make sure that we're within the legal yeah. side of it that you know we don't get caught up in. It can be, but that I've not seen the agree that agreements between Douglas County and Fulton County. So right, but I'm saying the agreement I'm concerned with to make sure that if they decide to put an outside <coughs> vendor on this thing for whatever reasons, you yeah. know, and it may be something good that they need to do or something good for them, but we don't get in the crossfire of well, you, we we gave it to you guys for free, you guys not paying us any rent, so. You know, they gonna come in and do X. Yeah, I think so, the word so in this agreement can we assure something that, that will protect us, you know, to make sure that we don't get in the crossfire or something that, you know, the next administration decide to say, you know what, we, we can do this. We're gonna put Kroger on top of there. <laughs> and, and you know, do drone flying to, to communicate and do something that we end up getting crossing the crosshairs of something that we didn't plan or, or look for. So can we assure ourselves that we don't get in that kind of crossfire? Because I like free. <laughs> I like free, so good. good. Okay, I yield back. Okay, I agree with Commissioner uh, Mitchell. Sometimes free comes with a cost. So. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, and we'll move on to the next. Thank you all so much. Great Thank job. Um, tab number eleven: Authorization to adopt the resolution and award the bid for tax anticipation note to PNC Bank for an annual rate of 2.1 uh, or 2.16% and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents for <coughs> legal review. Uh, Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, we had the bid opening this past Friday for the 2018 TAN borrowing. We had three local financial institutions submit bids, PNC Bank, JP Morgan, SunTrust. The PNC's rate uh, for the uh, interest rate for the borrowing was 2.16%, JP Morgan's was 2.4%, and SunTrust uh, was 2.2%. Uh, the Finance Department uh, Director Paul and Holman and her folks uh, looked at the total interest expense, what the county legal fees would be, as well as any bank legal fees, and came up with the total. And the PNC's ex total expense to us would be 216000 JP Morgan's is 235 and SunTrust is 218. So the recommendation is that we award the, the TAM borrowing to PNC <coughs> at a rate of 2.16%. Okay. And any questions related to the actual finance piece can be re referred to the record hall. Yes. Any, any questions from the board? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson? Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick, and, and, and neither one of you can answer this question. Um, so last time, what was the rate last year? One what? I think it was 1.75 or 1.8. Mm, yeah, it was around there. I should have brought that. I was looking to see if I had the issue, but I don't have it with me. But yeah, it was one, 
one and a half to one point seven, I believe. All right, so fifty basis points up. So obviously natural inflation. So you couldn't have gotten no better than that in light of the current environment. Everything is just increasing. So, um, all right. And you said how much um, direct peacock? Two what? Two. Two point one six percent. Yeah, yeah. Two point one six percent. All right. All right. I think I'm good. So. Um, how long after we approve this will it take into effect? Will you be able to move it? The funds will come in on the 21st, next Monday. The closing will be this Friday. The, the closing will. Oh, it'll be Monday? Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Closing is Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So funds over and then you <coughs> do what you normally do for um, business usual operation. Okay. I just wanted to clarify um, the difference between last year and this year. Um, it's just the environment. I mean, we got the best we could. It was competitive with three known brands. It ain't just, you know, uh, duly done. And the rates were pretty close, or at least two of them were, were 2.16 versus 2.2. Mm -hmm. The third one was 2.4. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you, Dr. Okay. And one more thing I would like to Yes. Okay. One thing I would like to add is um, if we could also have where this is adopting the resolution for the TAN, but also um, have the wording in there and I can work with Jennifer to um, look at investment options and give me the authority to do that. Um, I'm looking at either one of two things. One is our current SunTrust bank, but we also have experienced some good rates with um, the Georgia Fund One account, which is through the Department of Treasury of the state. Uh, that's where we have our um, SPLOS bond proceeds mm -hmm. and debt service accounts. And their rates right now, I think the last month, were like 1.5%. So it kind of hedges against what we're paying. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like that uh, flexibility to be able to do that awesome. if possible. Yes. Um, so I can work with Jennifer if that's okay so we can expand this agenda item to allow me that flexibility for the investment side. That's going to give you some leverage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's appropriate for this, <coughs> not a, as a committee request, but for the full board. So mm -hmm. I have no opposition. So, mm -hmm. well, I mean, mm -hmm. all guys go there. Commissioner Mitchell, I believe you have a comment. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, um, give, oh, I'm sorry. Will you, uh, give, give me the cost again. Was it uh, roughly about $216,000 or something? It was 216 218 and 220 235 I'm sorry. Got it. And, and the offsetting is for you to reinvest the dollars and says <coughs> to kind of offset that 2.16 mm -hmm. um, now with that i know you're smart about this that you won't get it caught up or tied up to where you <coughs> when you need it correct but that's the whole purpose of this right okay so and because it is short term you know not looking at cds or anything okay. like that georgia fund one mm -hmm. um is no you know it's, it's just pretty much like a money market account and they have higher interest rates. Um, and like I said, we've just had really uh, good customer service with them and good rates uh, with our SPLOS proceeds. So. And, and, and what kind of closing costs we pay, pay on this? Um, it would be the county legal fees for 15000 and the bank legal fees for up to 5000 Okay. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. All right. So I guess what we're saying to add is you and, you and Jennifer get together and kind of add that piece to where you guys have the flexibility of actually doing some small, quick, I guess, investment of some sort to kind of offset that 2.16, you know, in numbers and, and see what that kind of. And I can better. let y'all know when it's paid off. Hopefully, it will be it will be paid off early. No commitment yet. Understood. But um, we did have in the legal documents that there was no prepayment penalty. We can pay it off in whole or in part whenever Next we see it. Next question about prepayment penalties. So let's get to know that there are no prepayment penalties. And um, even with that, when you make your investments of some sort. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But just as a point of clarity, I have, and I, I didn't just share with Commissioner Bolker, um, I have no, I have all um, confidence in Director Holman's ability you know, in giving her authorization of, of, of authority. My issue would be um, the source of providing those services is where I would pause. I think the one that's recommended I could support without question. But you know, sometimes people create investment. Mm -hmm. um, 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 <coughs> Um, considerations and entities and they're out there and we give them business to manage on our behalf and it's like oh no I so I, I think that's important to acknowledge it's not you alone mm -hmm. it, it's who you're also making recommendation that will manage this money for us because to Commissioner Mitchell's mm -hmm. point we don't want to get caught I know you got it we need to say it for the record it's not just you it's who we're giving the business to so Absolutely, and my only two options that I'm seeing right now are just your Georgia Fund one or SunTrust, and that's who we have our normal banking with. So, 
that would be what I'm looking at. I just didn't want to commit and say join someone in the agenda item and something fall through with that and then not, not happen. So. But, but I think the point to give you authorization and not know who it's going to, we need to know. So exactly. You, they yes, hand, and it, I agree. It's both. It's not either or, but how you doing? Yes, okay. sir. Okay, we're moving on to the next item, uh, tab number 12, authorization to award a contract to Southeastern Engineering Corporation at a total cost of $180,000 for the design and engineering of sidewalks near Lithia Springs Elementary, <coughs> Chestnut Log Middle, and New Manchester High School to be paid for out of splashed bonds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Peacock. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to make a note, items 12, 14, and 15 have not gone to the Transportation Committee yet. They are scheduled to be on the agenda tomorrow. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in, in, on March the 31st, we sent out a rebid for the uh, sidewalk projects at these three schools. The original bid, we did not receive any responses. Uh, this time, we received one response from Southeastern Engineering Incorporated. Um, they have broken down the, um, the three different projects and given us prices uh, that total up to the $180,000. Uh, Southeastern is already doing several other projects for us in the county, so we know that they're able to do it. Um, and we're, um, we, need to, we need to move this forward. Uh, we need to go ahead and get the design work done uh, and um, provide this, uh, that, the, the sidewalks that we promised to the citizens. So we're recommending that um, that the board allow us to award this contract to Southeastern for $180,000. Okay. Any comment from the board of commissioners? Sounds good. We've been waiting on this project for quite a while. So thank you so much for letting me talk. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah. You have one. We do have one. Concern. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just what we were just sidebarring, and you know, this is one of those we call administrative concurrence. You know, something duly noted that um, committee, um, county administrator that it should have came to the committee. But we've talked about this one exhaustively. Okay. This is not one that we have um, not talked about. So mm -hmm. I, I think that just on this one, um, it's duly noted that we concur administratively, okay. and, and it came straight to board commissioners. So it wasn't a sidebar in the process or the committee or anything. It's just that we've exhausted this one. So I yield. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Peacock. Please note that tab number 13 and 14 have not gone before the transportation committee yet, but however, we will be um, discussing these today. Tab number 13 is authorization to enter into a supplemental consulting services agreement with the Jacobs Engineering Group and Corporation to finalize the construction drawings for improvements to the Stewart Mill Road and Reynolds Road construction <coughs> to be paid for our splash bonds. And authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin, good morning. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Madam, Madam Chair and uh, Commissioners. This is another item that has been talked about exhaustively as well. Uh, it is the design of uh, uh, Stewart Mill and Reynolds, uh, adding turn lanes uh, uh, as part of this project. Uh, we anticipate that design will take about four months and then the project will be bid out for construction. Our hope is to, to have that process underway before the end of the year. Okay, any questions from the board? Sounds set, like self-explanatory. So we'll move on to the next tab, number 14, authorization to award a contract to H.R.J. Haney and Associates Incorporation for construction of the ITS system expansion project uh, P1001262 and authorize the chairman to sign <coughs> to signal all related documents. Was it supposed to be signed? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sign. Okay, I just want to make sure. Sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Directed by the <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. This, this is a, uh, a project that's been uh, in the works for quite a while. It will add the ability to tie in 23 additional traffic signals to our transportation center. So we'll be able to monitor um, how the signals are, are operating out in the field. Uh, a lot of the work is going to be done along Chapel Hill Road and uh, Route 78, uh, Section of 78, and uh, there's a couple locations along Route 5. So it will link up another 23 traffic signals to our transportation center. This project is 80% covered by federal funds and 20% uh, by local funds. Yes. Any questions from the board? <coughs> Commissioner Robinson. 
Now, on this one, this is one that we do, we will talk about the transportation, because I'm just now seeing this, and I'm, I'm less concerned about the source of the funds. Uh, it's how do we pick this firm? Um, was it bid, or was it some type of specialized? How, how was this contract awarded? It was it was bid. And the, it and was bid, okay. Uh, yes. All right, so, so we, we bid this out, and who in the, and I'm, I'm only asking for the record, so we, we captured. Um, it, it was it was uh, uh, bid out last year because there are federal funds on this uh, project. The bids have to be approved locally and then submitted to GDOT for their concurrence. And so that that process took about eight months to complete. And so we finally got authorization <coughs> to go ahead and award the contract to the low bidder. But it it was reviewed. It was bid out, reviewed locally. They were selected, and this was sent to GDOT. They concurred and issued us a notice to proceed to award the contract. Yeah, and, and that's the part because it's been eight months and it's elapsed. We just want to make sure you're covered and committed because, again, it's just that's the whole point of the oversight, just to check and balance. So we appreciate it. We'll bring it up tomorrow. Thank you. I yield. Okay. All right. Commissioner. So you said 8020. Um, do we have any true numbers or you just? We have true, yes. Okay. Um, the information that's attached should have a oh, breakdown. Guys, well, my, yes. my new computer is, is not. Yeah, it's it's a little over $400,000. Uh, that okay. would be out of the, the total, right. the total amount is uh, $509,164. Uh, and um, so 80% of that is federal funds. Can you give that, give that number once again? Uh, five, five hundred and nine thousand one hundred and sixty-four. Okay, and outside our portion is twenty percent of that. Those are the numbers off the top of your head. I'll get it. That's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, thank you. You guys are good. Approximately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. So, so this will go back to the. Uh, uh, <coughs> Transportation committee and, and be vetted and then come before us after that once these guys kind of do their checks and balances, I guess. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I, um, I'll yield back. You yield? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like we can move on to the next one. Uh, tab number um, 16. Wait, yeah. No, tab number 15. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Authorization to approve the supplemental agreement with R.J. Haney for additional work on the new traffic signal at the intersection of Riverside Parkway <coughs> and Rock House Road project to be paid out of the SLOS bond <coughs> and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director Valentin, you want to tell us about this one? Yes, uh, 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 Madam Chair. This, this is another project that's been talked about uh, extensively <coughs> at previous meetings. And essentially what happened here is that uh, the original quantities that were built into the contract were not enough to be able to tie into the existing <coughs> infrastructure out there. So we, uh, we had to uh, include additional sidewalk and curbing and that type of thing to complete the project. Okay. Uh, so the total change would be $13,811.80. Um, we anticipate that this will complete, complete the project and there would be no additional supplemental agreements necessary. Okay, any questions from the board? Yes. Comment? Uh, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, uh, so this is a change order, uh, increased scope. Um, uh, how do we, who, who did the original estimate? Do we have like a standby engineer? I mean, who? Um. It, I, I don't, I don't. It was uh, one of those things that was <coughs> done before I, I got involved in, in a lot of detail. Uh, however, as with any construction project, uh, the, the original quantities on the plans are, are done by uh, estimation mm -hmm. and the contract stipulates that the contractor will be paid for actual quantities out of <coughs> the field. So sometimes what happens is where you're anticipating tying in the curbing or the sidewalk, the curbing that's there is not in the correct alignment where it could be busted up and that happened after the design was <coughs> completed. And so when you go out there to build new, you have to be able to tie into the existing. Sometimes you have to remove some of the existing to do it properly. Mm -hmm. 
uh, again, just uh, and it's plus or minus, right? So it grew a little bit. I mean, what, what's the plus or minus for the original um, work versus this? This is thirteen thousand. What, what's the what's the variance? I believe the original uh, contract was around two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Uh, so it's about five uh, percent, six percent, six percent. And that falls within the normal um, guidelines. Yes, sir. Uh, plus or minus, yeah, Bill. Anything below 10%. 10%. So we're safe. Um, we, we, it's reasonable. So, okay. I'm, I'm just looking for the reasonable test, which is, it, it, you know, again, whenever we have scope creep and something, you know, unanticipated that we have to adjust, I'm, I'm not um, opposed to it. I just wanted to have clarity for the record for it. So I'm going to try to Okay. Thank you. Oh, let me see you. I'm sorry, Commissioner. <coughs> Help me understand what is the below 10% that we'll just be of. Gen they yeah, generally, um, any change orders above or below 20 Well, there, there are there are various criteria. For example, depending on the size of the contract, that number adjusts. But uh, with a with a contract that has federal funds, mm -hmm. if you adjust <coughs> over up to twenty percent, you have to then revisit the contract and make some adjustments in the unit pricing, for example. Mm -hmm. But at the local level, you also have some guidelines <coughs> as to when that, when is an adjustment a reasonable uh, fetal condition situation. And I believe locally it is 10% of the overall contract. So by being below that 10%, that's within the norm of what you should anticipate on a construction project. So, so my other question to this is that 10 percent margin offer, I mean, over uh, because of a change or of some sort, does that get spread at a cost from federal and uh, us or the people in the state, whomever? Or is it just strictly on, on the local level? In this particular case, there are no local, uh, no state uh, federal funds. So it's all lo locally. It's all local. It's all local. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Now, on, uh, to answer your question, if it were a federally funded project, then we would have to get concurrence from the DOT to caution. Got it. So cause then the cost will be shared. The increase will be shared. But right now, this is all local. So at 13, 8, 11, it's all us. Because right. it's all of us. I mean, it's all of us. <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks for the update. I didn't know that. Thank you. you get yes, I yield back. Okay. All right. We'll move on to tab number 16. Tab number 16 is authorization to award a master services agreement and service and license agreement to Civic Plus Incorporation HR software for online application, onboarding, and employee tracking, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final uh, review. <coughs> Director Perry and Congratulations, we've been waiting on this since yes, I arrived. We've been waiting on this, uh, I know I have. <laughs> and thank so, you all for uh, allowing this to go forward. Uh, this is just the next step in the process of establishing an agreement with, uh, with Civic, H uh, Civic Plus uh, for the uh, Civic HR uh, uh, program. <coughs> uh, a little bit of time has transpired since the time we started this process, so we've been back and forth with Civic Plus and the actual cost that they quoted us initially, which has gone through, has come down. So we're happy about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went from about 24.9 to about 17.9. So we are uh, we're going to be saving a little bit of money as well. Nothing has changed as far as the services and the uh, 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 what we're expecting of uh, Civic Plus. So uh, this is uh, just the agreement establishes the. <coughs> software, the website, the training, um, the maintenance and services and what have you. So uh, we have uh, forwarded that over to legal and they've uh, made some changes. We got that back to Civic Plus and they have returned that with the changes as well. So um, we're ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board or comments from the board of commissioners? Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Okay. So so with that being said, though, I'm <coughs> glad that we, we, we kind of, <coughs> what, what what triggered the, the, the cost adjustment? Um, I think that's your, your good negotiation skills. <laughs> well, no, I won't say that. I'll just say, uh, I, I preface it by saying that a little bit of time transpired, and Civic Plus may have been getting cold feet that they may, uh, we may be okay, pulling out. Okay. Okay. So, that, you know, they, they kind of reviewed some things, and um, and the beginning of the year came. So they gave us a <coughs> little uh, drop in cost as far as implementation of certain uh, services were concerned. Okay. 
And is this an annual cost? Or? This, this is a, a first year cost. Okay. And then the annual cost will be uh, about $12,695. Okay. okay. That, and that's the annual cost? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Um, and how did Russ feel about all this? Did you, you know, did you, did you, oh, there he is. He's trying to hide on the far end. Yeah, he's hiding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, was, I know what I, I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so actually this was reviewed by the Technology Committee in right. August. Um, we liked the presentation and thought uh, Frederick and his team did a great job. Uh, comparing various products and, and coming up with what would work best for us. Uh, we did have an opportunity recently to review the contract and the license agreement, feel really good about it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is actually a recommendation from the Technology Committee uh, sitting on Sherry's desk waiting for the final mm -hmm. signature, mm -hmm. which can then be included with the package. Understood, understood. I just want to hear, let, let everybody hear that part of you. Oh, well, I'd love to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, outside of that, though, uh, I have no other further questions. Okay. Uh, Hi, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And again, I'm sure the committee has taken a look at this. I mean, I'm encouraged that you know we've been talking about this. Um, you know, to, to interact with the county. You know, coming out of the woods, ways to interact with the citizens, and, and you know, we talked about um, people getting uh, contracts, mm -hmm. but also jobs as well. And, and what is that? What is that experience with the county? You know, it's always about you know, that, that that first experience, that first touch. Now, I think you know, trying to uh, establish a culture. Uh, that, that the, the citizens feel as though they're a part of it, um, that they don't feel alienated at that, that, their point of, of, of touch where, hey man, I mean, even Walmart, I'm going to Walmart and, and, and be advanced and, and, and apply for a job. So I, I'm encouraged by this. Um, I, I guess my question then moving more specifically to um, who will be able to access this information? Like, uh, if I think about um, headhunters and people like that that I know out in the field and, and I know their capabilities, um, this is internal to us, um, and once somebody's on board, will only HR have access to this, or how does it work? Is it an invert where anybody, as a department head, or is, I mean, how does it work? That, that that's <coughs> correct. Only HR will have uh, access to to all of the data. Yep. Uh, we will uh, provide access to <coughs> the different department heads as well as uh, their designated. <coughs> to certain information, obviously, to yep. applications and things of that nature yep. so that they can review those. Yep. But the overwhelming uh, information, and we'll make a determination as to what uh, needs to be um, uh, reviewed by, by uh, department heads and what specifically is human resource related. Okay. And then my last question, thank you for that, is just um, the health of an organization is typically through metrics. And so I'm trusting that this software will provide metrics, certain variables that HR needs to keep up with Absolutely. Um, as relates to over time and its makeup and, and anything else that may be federally or state required and, and, and things of that nature. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Uh, every other year, Commissioner, we are required to submit an EEO4 report that, um, that talks about, uh, you know, all of the demographics that, the, uh, that, that are uh, entailed with the county. This will help us significantly with that. Uh, New World System does a good job, but uh, as long as our applicant tracking system, it goes a step further, a little step further. It'll let us know how many applications we have. You know, uh, for those who choose to fill out the demographic information, we can keep track of that as well. So uh, that is going to, uh, to really increase our uh, capabilities as far as uh, keeping up with who's applying, uh, where they're coming from, and things of that nature. Okay. And, and so you'll be able to take some of your offline processes, some of your old solutions, and, and really become more integrated, more holistic. I mean, does it make your job better other than making the experience for the citizens or whomever wants to get a, uh, the front end? What about you? How does it, is oh, this good, bad? I mean, this is, this is excellent for us. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime we can move from, uh, you know, thumbing through papers and, uh, and, and getting, staples in our, in our phones, we're, we're doing a lot better. You know, so um, this, this helps us out a great deal. My uh, employee assistant is going to be able to go on and do different things because this is going to be working for us in the background. 
So this is definitely a, uh, a step up for us. Very good. I'm, yeah. I'm encouraged to hear that, that that's an area that, that they get neglected sometimes. HR in certain areas, mm -hmm. they fall down. You know, they're not you know, the front and center type of departments, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that you guys um, took this up and, 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 and brought it forth. I yield my turn. Mm -hmm. Just uh, one comment, uh, uh, Director Perry. The system also is rather broad. It allowed, <coughs> I guess, for the future, if you wanted to look at performance evaluations, you know, could you expound a little bit about what the system has tied to evaluations as well? Yes, there, there, there's like the trying. capability, and we, uh, we reduced that. You know, we, we made a decision that we didn't necessarily need that right off the bat. Right. Um, there's a possibility we'll be coming back maybe in a couple of years mm -hmm. to make some <coughs> to add on the software that uh, that this is capable of doing. Performance management is definitely one of them. Um, to uh, makes it a lot more convenient for department heads to go online and complete performance evaluations, submit them online to, to our department. And uh, we, you know, things don't get lost in the shuffle. We're able to keep up with that uh, uh, a lot better. And performance management is something that uh, that's something that we'll be looking at <coughs> in the future. Not necessarily a part of this, not at all a part of this agreement, this initial agreement, but it is something that uh, that civic HR is capable of doing. <coughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions from the board of commissioners? Okay, I'll move forward. Thank you so much, Director yeah. Director Perry. Um, the next uh, item is tab number 17, authorization to apply for the Georgia Department of Agriculture grant in the amount of $10,000 for the dog and cat sterilization program. Director um, Stanley. Um, this is a grant that we um, applied for and received last year. We received ten thousand uh, dollars. We would like to the, the animal shelter would like to apply for this grant again, um, and we would like to request ten thousand dollars. However, the funds this time are a little less. Last year when we applied, it was six hundred thousand dollars. This year, there's only about four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in funds available. So um, we would like to apply for this grant and request ten thousand dollars. There's no match. Okay. Any questions from the board? Thank you so much. We'll move on. Uh, commissioners, next we have the approval of our expenses. If you look at tab 18 to 22, take a look at those and then we will discuss those tomorrow at our board of commissioners meeting. Any other comments before I call for executive session? Okay. At this time, um, Attorney Thompson, do we uh, need to go into executive session? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. For what? Items is it personnel or land acquisition and personnel? Okay, land acquisition and personnel. Do I have a motion or do we have a motion to go into executive session? So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, take a 10 minute break and then we'll be here and then we'll start. And, then we'll yeah. and then we'll come back and we'll resume. Okay, thank you so much. All right, commissioners, do we have any other discussion? No man. No man. Okay, Still with right. that being said, this meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.